All right, back, back Periscope. Ooh. You know what? When this is happening, you know what? Something great getting ready to happen? When all this has happened, do you not know that God's getting ready to do something great? Because the enemy mess with you if he's not moving, if God's not moving. So that tells me that God's going to blow your mind. That tells me that God's going to take your impossible situation and turn around. So the word of God said that, you know, that he is going to do all inspiring things, immeasurable things, things greater than we ever could ask. Uh, imagine through the power that work in us, the Holy Ghost, means that He's going to do unusual stuff, things that you've never seen before. He's going to break those walls down. He's going to break those barrels down. He's going to remove those shackles, those things that has hindered your life, has caused confusion in life. He's going to do things like never before in your life. You're going to see miracles happen. Hallelujah. You're going to see that people go in the hospital and the doctor is going to be amazed because he said, I have operated on people and did search on this particular uh, a problem, but I've never seen nothing like happen like that. Know why? Because the Lord is going to operate. He's going to send the angels in there to bring in the missing parts of your life. And he's going to look at it. Oh, my word. What is going on? See, this is the days that we can really see the miraculous acts of God move in the people life, even in the hospital, in uh, whatever we're getting ready to see miracles like that before. We're getting ready to see breakthroughs like that before. I'm getting ready to see things of changes. I see it already in atmosphere. Some of you are going to see things. Even your marriage, your, your, your stubborn husband is getting ready to come in. Your stubborn wife is getting ready to come in. Your stubborn children get ready to come in. Your stubborn sisters and brothers and nieces and nephews are getting ready to come in. And if your mama and father are living, they're coming in. Your grandmother and grandfather are living, they're coming in. We get ready to see the greatness of God that your prayers have been moved. You Hallelujah. That God is moving on your prayers. Amen. And some of you don't have faith at all. God said, I'm going to move for you anyway and show you who I am. He's showing up himself. He's showing off himself. Hallelujah. We're going to see the supernatural miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you are going to uh, 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 see things on your job. That's good. Even though the enemy look like he's winning on the job, but no, 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 he's not winning. God's going to create position on jobs for you. Amen. He's getting ready to put you in a position that you're not even qualified for. To show them who he is to you. I mean, uh, uh, Periscope's freaking up this morning. Amen. But he's going to show you who he is. He's going to move in such a way, going to blow your mind. Can you get your mind blown? I know I can get my mind blown. Hello, hello somebody. Amen. You're going to see things happen like never before. You're going to see things turn around like never before. You're going to see some changes like never before. God's doing it because he wants to encourage you because we're under grace. And because we're under grace, we want to see the supernatural of the movement of God on our job, in our business, and whatever we've been through. We're going to see. And some of you who don't have jobs, you're going to get jobs you never thought you were going to get. You're going to go in there for the job and they say, well, the job that you want, I have something better. I know you're not qualified, but I'm willing to to uh, take a chance and trust you. I'm willing to uh, send you to school, amen, and put you in this position. This is what I'm talking about. God's going to put you in a position, a high position, making more money than you ever have before because he wants his people to be blessed and he wants to show himself all through you. You have been elected and selected and appointed for such a time like that that we're going to see the, the miracles of art, aspiring, immeasurable things happen in our life that we Never thought it's gonna happen. This is the time we live in, in the great thing. So he don't want you to look at what's going on. He wants you to understand that he's getting ready to move. Some of you have uh, uh, issues in your life. You've been dealing with I, 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 as a woman that has an issue in life. You've been dealing with nineteen years. Help me, Holy Spirit, and God's getting ready to turn that situation around. Amen. You've been hurt with your child, and you're still holding on to it. And God's getting ready to move in your life right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody has a wife and been in the hospital for three months, and God's getting ready to move and do a supernatural miracle. I see somebody. Uh, been in a coma and God's getting ready to wake that, that individual up right now who's been in a coma for a while I say 12 months amen and they're going to come out the coma said the Lord thank you Jesus hallelujah 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 somebody is six months behind 
and they mortgage and they been have not been put out because they're trying to work with you. And God said he's going to put all that you owe in the back and you're not going to lose your home. I don't know who you are, but you're not going to lose your home. I see the miracle of God working for you right now, giving you miracle, giving you a favor right now with the individual. Praise God. Hallelujah. We just thank you, God. Hallelujah. For moving for the individual. Amen. Somebody's getting ready to move to Florida. Hallelujah. And the money is kind of short right now, but because you've been faithful to God, God's going to give you an increase of the money that you're able to move to Florida and settle and and uh, 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 retire here in Florida. Praise God. And God said, don't worry about it. He's going to make sure that you, you're going to get a home. And everything going to be there. And it's going to give you favor. I don't know who you are, but God's moving for you. This to inspire us. Say, God said, God's eyes and I've seen or ears and I heard. Or even into the hearts of men that what God has inspired things, immeasurable things. So take the limit off of God. So God's going to move you in there, in that home. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, somebody been looking at this house. Amen. And I don't know who you are, but you've been looking at this house and you ain't got no money because you're tired of living in an apartment. Amen. And so God says, step out on faith and believe that I can give you favor in there. That. Amen. And God said he's going to give you favor in the house and you're going to come back and testify that God gave you something that was been impossible to man to give you. Amen. And not because of your credit. Amen. Because he decided to do it. See, God said, I will bless them who bless who he wants to bless and he will have mercy on who he wants to have mercy. So God is showing mercy on you today. Amen. And showing you that he's getting ready to put you in that house because see people been talking down at you and say that you're never going to be anything. And God's going to, you're going to, I mean, I just see it. He's going to do it so supernatural. He's going to blow your mind. So he's going to move for you. These are the days he said, unmeasurable things, things don't measure God, how he's going to do it. But God's getting ready to do unmeasurable things that you never thought is going to happen in your life. And this is what he says. I'm going to do unmeasurable things. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody been suffering a, 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 a blood like disease, uh, you know, a blood disorder for 15, I hear God said 12 to 15 years. Amen. And look like it's going 19 years, but 12 to 15 years. I hear, hear the Holy Spirit said there's going to be divine healing right now in you right now. Divine healing of your blood. I see God's putting your blood in order. I see God's healing you right now. These are the super things of the odd things to get ready to do. Amen. Somebody has a son been in prison for 18 years and God's getting ready to get him out. That's a lot long time. Amen. I saw eight years. Amen. But 18 years. Amen. And God's getting ready to get him out of prison. Amen. Hallelujah. He's born again. He's saved and delivered. Amen. So get ready for it right now. Amen. Somebody has a, 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 a young, young girl, young daughter, 18 years, 16 16 is she at 18 and she's been giving you a lot of trouble amen and you've been worrying about it and so god said release her i'm getting ready to turn her around in fact i'm going to use her to uh to be for my glory to be a minister of the gospel so god has heard your prayer he's going to turn your daughter around you i don't know who you are but he's going to turn your daughter around amen you know who you are she's going to turn you around somebody daughter has been in a a relationship with a same sex. Amen. And God said, your daughter is getting ready to come out of that. Amen. You know who you are. There's several of you. Got two, uh, several of you. It's not just one daughter. It's several of you. Got a daughter. Amen. And uh, they in a relationship, amen, you've been praying for because you know it's not right in the same sex relationship. And the person, and God said, get ready because that child get ready to come in. Hallelujah. God has heard your prayer. He's going to turn that around in your life. So, you know, I will give God praise right now. I don't know who you are, but you give God praise. So it's moving right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you say, there is also... Uh, 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 you've been praying for your family. Amen. You say, I want my family saved. Well, I come to tell you that God's going to save your family right now. Amen. You've been worrying about your family. You want your family saved. But God said, I'm going to save your family. Amen. Say, don't worry about it. I got you. I got you. I'm getting ready to save your family. Hallelujah. You know who you are. God's getting ready to save your family. Amen. There's been a lot of uh, uh, tugging going on. Amen. Tugging in your family of unforgiveness. That's why I'm, I'm picking up unforgiveness. Amen. Of things of hurt and pain. And God said, I'm getting ready to turn your family around. You know who you are. Amen. And he's getting ready to put it together. He heard your prayer. Amen. He heard your prayer. Somebody give God the praise right now. I hear the Holy Spirit is moving quickly on your situation. He said, don't give up. You're right there at the door. At the door. Amen. And the doorkeeper. It's Jesus say he's come open up for you for them to come in. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's also several you have several family members. Amen. On drugs. Amen. They've been out there on drugs, bad on drugs for a long time. And God is getting ready to turn them around. They've been on drugs for a long time. Amen. 
uh, I hear this a heroin. Somebody been on heroin for a long time, and God's going to deliver that loved one from heroin. Amen. That's a bad drug. That's worse than uh, crack cocaine. And God's going to deliver them for they won't have an overdose. Amen. Hallelujah. God, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Someone is in a, a in relationship in a very bad a mental and a physical relationship been abused, and God's going to stop that. He's going to get you out of that situation because you're living in fear. That's what God said. You're a female. You're living in fear. You're a young lady between your 20s and 30s. And you're 28, something like that. And uh, God said, you're living in fear. And God's going to get you out of that situation. I don't know who you are, but you've been in fear because you're afraid. Because you're afraid that he may kill you. Amen. And God's going to open that door for a fine way escape because you've been trying to put an, uh, an order on him to keep him away from long distance. And, uh, and every time you do, he, he like, he trying to keep a track on you, got you in bondage. And God said, he's going to open that door that you will get that. Amen. Praise God. He's going to open the door for you to get out of that situation because that's about to drive you crazy. You know, you're too young to be in something like that. You thought the person, see, we got to understand, stop trying to make somebody be something that we're not. And a lot of times you people, what you do is you're trying to make something to be something, which is not something. Amen. And so that's the wrong thing to do, to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm praying God that he's getting you out of that right now. So the door is going is already been open right now. I don't know how he's going to do it. But I know God's open the door for you can get out that situation because it's really uh, causing you, you're too young. Amen. And then God do not want you to have a heart attack and be down on. And so God is going to move you out that situation. You know who you are. He's going to move you out the situation because it's been causing a lot of issues. It's been causing a lot of problems. And I hear the Holy Spirit say, I'm getting ready to get you out of that. Praise his holy name. Amen. So that's the same scripture that we're talking about that he's able to do a ceiling above more than we think of as well. Anyway, God can move that situation and turn it around. Amen. Hallelujah. He can move that situation and turn around and, and make it better than it was before. So God is changing things. Amen. God is moving things out the way. Hallelujah. And he don't want you to see it what it is. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, you've been at a place. Amen. Say, now, God, how long did I'm going to be in there? Amen. How long? Amen. And you have a trust issue, trusting God, because you want God to move for you right now. And I'm asking God to move my faith on there, on your situation. Amen. To get you out of that. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to stop packing your clothes. And start walking in faith. You get ready to move in that house. Get the stuff that you don't want uh, out the way. And what you're going to keep, you keep it. Because God's going to give you a new thing. He's going to give you new furniture, new things. I don't know who you are, but he's going to give you new things. I receive that for myself. You don't receive it because that's coming directly from the throne of grace. He's And I know when God tells me something, it comes to pass. Now, I may be not hollering and screaming like everybody else to get everybody else, but I know that when God been telling me lately, it's been happening. I mean, it's really kind of scary because, I, you know, that when he says something, not scary, it'd be a fear, but it, it just blow my mind that in awe that I'm looking at that what he's telling me is really happening before my eyes. I'm seeing a vision of every day. I see several of you has had business, and your business has been going down, and God's going to increase your business. Bless your business better than ever before. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Have your way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that that business is going to increase. I thank you for, because of Israel, we bless Israel, peace, and bless I, a leader in this country, America. And Father, I pray for those people that lost their loved ones of this devastating happened in New York in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray for divine healing right now. I pray for special protection and covering right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. I pray for, uh, I see that the enemy is trying to start something again in New York. Want to try to 9-11, but God's going to stop that. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, because he went through enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for turning that around. What the devil meant, even God, you turn around making good. Hallelujah. But we're living, they say, he's getting ready to move uh, on your situation. The Bible says he's going to do uh, inspiring, immeasurable things. Now, the Bible says he's, you're going to be in such odd in your situation. Amen. And turn it around. Amen. Hallelujah. And I know that he's canceling out your debts. And I know that's a heavy weight on a lot of you. Amen. Finance is a, a lot of you are in struggles with your finance and God do not want that. And so God's going to take that struggle of finance away from you. Amen. And a lot of you just up to here. He wants you to rest and trust him. And see, when you rest and trust him, regardless of the finance, that God's going to move for you. Amen. Hallelujah. So it, as you trust and rest in God. 
And don't look at it. He's already moving on your finance. Amen. He's already turning. Amen. Your finance around. He's already changing things around for you. So get ready. Amen. Because he said we're going to be at awe. Amen. Of things. Inspiring things. We're living in awesome days. We're living in great days. Even things are happening. Murdering. Killing. We're living in the best days. We're living in, in the harvest time of jubilee. Amen. Hallelujah. And that we ever, ever been before. Amen. No, I'm a woman. Very much so. Let me not pay you no attention. Born a woman, going to die a woman, and that's it. Amen. It's still ignorance. Praise God. And so God's getting ready to move like never before. I should not even let you interfere with what I was saying. God forgive me. That's the devil. Amen. I, want, I don't want to hear this person. Amen. Hallelujah. This, this block him out. Amen. So God is getting ready to move for you in such a way like never before. Amen. You're going to see some changes happen. You're going to see some breakthroughs happen. Amen. So some of you have been praying and those prayers that you've been praying has not been unheard. So he's moving in your situation. He's moving on the court case. He's moving in your husband. He's moving your wife. He says this. Now to God who can do so many are inspired things. You got to know who you serve. Don't look at your condition. Don't look at your situation. He could take, if your credit is down to 495, 500 like mine was, he brought it up to over 700 and something. Amen. If he can do that to me, how much he can do for you? He can also take your credit for 700 and what it is and bring it up to 850. Amen. This is God, God we serve. He wants you to understand when you begin to get your eyes off of your situation and stop looking at, well, uh, uh, nothing is working out and stop saying woe is me and stop saying that you be careful what you say from your tongues be careful what come out your tongue he, he god cannot go back on his word god the one don't change god is the same today as yesterday and if he has spoken it's a guarantee that it will happen if he promises you something see god cannot lie the word of God says that God cannot lie. He's not a man that should lie. Neither the son of man repent. Having not spoken him, will he not do it? He will do just what he says. And what he's doing, he's fixing things for you. He's working out and because he wants to show you something. He wants to build your faith. And because of grace and his mercy, he wants to show you how much he loves you. He wants to show you what he can do in your life. He wants to show you that he's going to take your impossible situation and turn around. And in fact, right now, I know God is moving right now. I know God is turning things around. Amen. I know God is changing right now. Amen. I know God is moving even quicker than you can imagine because you're too precious to God. You know, God will do a miracle even when you don't have faith of somebody else's faith and I'm asking to do on my faith to, to turn your impossible situation around to move for you right now in such a way right now. I see you. There's several ministries right now that doors been shut and God's going to open doors for you to go. And I hear even God's going to open doors for television for you can go on TV. Amen. I see God's going to do a miracle for you can go on TV. I just see things happen. Amen. It was shut things and you want to go on radio. I received that for myself. That's the Lord speaking. Amen. Hallelujah. Not Apostle Parchment, but God speaking. He's opened the door. Amen. And people have looked down at you and say that you are never going to be anything. You're never going to amount to anything. You're never going to have anything. But I come to tell you, don't listen to the lies because God God is open up new avenues, new doors. Now there's some doors that God has shut. And the reason why he shut those doors, because they, they have caused a lot of con confliction in your life. And so he's moving out the way and he's giving you the best because you, you have been, you have been uh, uh, faithful. And sometimes you may not feel like you're faithful, but you have been faithful. So I'm praying right now, all ministers right now, that God's going to open doors for you can go preach. Amen. Some of you going to go on foreign grounds in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you are going to go on foreign grounds out there to witness and minister to the people. Amen. So I saw doors. I just heard flap, 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 doors open. Amen. I received that for myself. Receive that. That's the Holy Spirit speaking. Amen. Those doors were shut. But now God is opening up best doors for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he see of your faithfulness. He see of your uh, 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 believing what he says. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I also heard God say he's going to give you transportation. Some of you don't have no good dependable transportation and you've been working on the old transportation that costs you money. And so God is giving you favor that you have better transportation. You know who you are. I don't know who you are, but you know who you are. Amen. There's a, uh, 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 I hear Leroy and, uh, uh, Melody. I don't know who's Melody, but that's someone named Melody. Amen. And God is moving for you quickly. I saw you, uh, 
on the sofa. Your sofa looked like a brownish type sofa. Amen. And God is moving for you. You pray and ask God to make a change because you have t- you had enough of going through what you've been going through. I hear the Holy Spirit say, I'm moving for you, Melody. Amen. Hallelujah. Your name is Marge. Marge, God's moving for you too. Your name is Marge. Amen. And there's a Jeffrey out there. Jeffrey, you've been going through a lot of struggles and heartbreaks. Amen. And, and God's getting ready to heal your inner heart right now and turn things around. Amen. Hallelujah. Your name is... Shabbat, Shabbat, Shalat. Your name is Shalat. And uh, God is moving on you, Shalat. Amen. You're coming out to be a Muslim. You're getting ready to be a Christian. And if, I know that the family turns a turn against him when you uh, change and be a Christian. But God said, don't worry about it. He got you. Amen. You're coming into a new family. Amen. I thank you, Father. Amen for moving right now. Now, somebody been praying for their nephew. And they've been praying for their marriage, and God's getting ready to heal that marriage and put it back together again. You know who you are. God's getting ready to heal that marriage and put it back together again. You know who you are, so God says he's going to heal that marriage and put it back together again. Amen. So I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost that work in me, that he's moving in your situation right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I will be coming to Jamaica. I don't know why, when, but God said you're going to Jamaica and do a revival. It, it probably be next year, not now, but I'll be coming to Jamaica. Amen. And I'm coming to Nada Land. I'm coming to Africa. Amen. Next year. And I'll be traveling a lot next year. So I'll be going to those different places. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm going to Britain, Great Britain. Amen. I'm going to Britain. Amen. United Kingdom. I'm going there right too. Amen. To preach next year. Amen. To do revival. Doors are being opened up. Amen. Left and right. Doors are being opened up left and right. There's a new day. There's a new dawn. There's a new beginning. And so what God is doing is preparing us for greater things. So when we go into 2018, we're going to see some great things happen. Are you ready for that precious one? Amen. Are you ready to receive? I feel so relaxed today. Amen. I feel like preaching. I don't feel like preaching. I feel like teaching. I don't feel like teaching. I feel like witness minister to you, uh, prophesying to you that great things that happen. Amen. For you. Amen. A uh, young lady, you've been saying yes. Amen. You get ready to move in that place that you've been asking God for. I see God's breaking down some barrels of walls that things been happen to you 15 and 12 years ago. Uh, and, uh, God is moving those things out the way. Amen. And that the hindrance out the way, and you're going to see the new beginning in your life. You've been going through a lot of things and God said, I'm getting ready to change some things in your life. I don't know who you are. I mean, you've been saying, amen. Yes. Amen. Your name is Kai as whatever name is. I, don't, I can't understand what it is, but you on Periscope and God is moving for you. Amen. You're going to begin to see the change. Amen. It's going to start happening. And fight the way that God's going to do it. He's going to blow your mind. He's going to blow your mind in the way that you've never seen before. Said the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Receive it. It's done. It's done. It's done. Hallelujah. Receive it. It's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's moving in such a way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody is a mother-in-law to a daughter-in-law and, uh, and the daughter-in-law has lied on you. And say some things that she shouldn't say about you. And you really mad. I want you to forgive her. Because when you don't forgive her. What you're doing is holding your blessings yourself. And God said I got this. Leave it alone. I got this and I will take care for you. Said the Lord. Amen. Let me do it my way. Amen. Amen. God said let him do it his way. Amen. So you've been hurt by it. And God said I'm getting ready to turn that around. Amen. Uh, we can't help that by the broadcast honey. I can't do nothing about that. That's uh, Periscope. Amen. That's not apostle. That's periscope freaking up. So I'm sorry, periscope. It's not me. It's 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 uh 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 people that's on periscope. It's not me. Periscope is freaking up. Amen. Now we got Facebook going back. Not periscope acting up. That's how the enemy tried to work. He tried to discourage, but it's hanging there. It's working. Amen. It's gonna be all right. The enemy that's mad. Amen. The things are happening. Amen. Okay. So don't let that get to you. All right. Amen. Okay. Praise God. So. He's saying that he's going to move in such a way, a way that's going to blow out my, amen. This is Sharonda. You get ready to move. I didn't know who you was. Hallelujah. You get ready to get that place. Amen. Hallelujah. He's getting ready to turn your life around. You miserable and things not, he's giving you, you know, so good about God is that he's merciful and forgiving. Amen. And he brings in restoration even if something don't go our way and it was supposed to go our way, he, he's in restoring. He always restores something that we lost and give us something better. And so he's doing that to to build you up to make things better for you. That's what God said. Isn't God good? 
He's a, he's very gracious. He's full of compassion and always show mercy. He's, he's, he's slow to anger and quit to show mercy. That's the kind of God we serve because of the grace he has upon us. And we're going to see changes. Amen. So there's things that happen. So he said, there is going to be some odd uh, things. You're going to be at odd of things that are going to happen in your life. And some of you say, I don't believe this has happened to me, but it is happened. That's the kind of God we serve. He said, you know, that we're going to be in such an, a, in a place Amen. He's going to put you in place. And, and this is God. I never thought that this was going to happen to me. And so God said, yes, this is him. This is him. Yes, it's moving in for you. Yes, this is him that changes things for me. Yes, this is him that doing it in a way that you never thought before. This is the kind of God we serve. So he doesn't move how we think he's going to move. He moved in the way that to blow our mind, to let us know that he's there for us. Amen. And does, it doesn't seem that he's there, but he's there for you, every one of you. So you get ready to see the greatness of God. That's what I love about God. He show himself off. Even when we don't see it, he show himself off the most unusual time. He show himself off to let us know that he loves us. Let us know that he's moving for us. Let us know that he's changing things around. So he said that I said, see, he's going to take your impossible situation. A lot of you are going to see your situation turn around. Amen. He is moving. Amen. I know because I was in with nothing. I didn't have anything. Amen. I have I have seen God when I have lost a home. He has sent people in there to bless me. He has sent people in there to give me money. To have a place to stay. He has sent people in there to bless me. To have the money. Even when I moved to Port St. Lucie. I didn't have no money. He spoke to people hard to bless me. Got the moving truck. I didn't have to put the money down for the house. I had to put nothing down for the closing. This is the kind of God I serve. So if he did that for me, how much more he going to do for you? Amen. Now, um, in the home, no, I'm going to get another home. But he said, if I trust him and rest and believe in him, he's going to do it for me again. But he's going to do it even greater. Well, I come to tell you, you may be in that place right now. And you say it does not look like nothing is going your way. It does not look, it's impossible for me to see that I can get that with God's own. But I want you to know with God, all things are possible. There's nothing impossible God can do. You don't look at what it is. You don't look at your circumstances. You don't look at say, well, uh, 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 and, and compare what God can't do. You got to know who you serve. You got to know that we serve a God that would take an impossible, something impossible, and turn around and make it possible. You got to know that for yourself that we don't serve a God that uh, uh, people think can't do it. We serve a God that would take your impossible situation and make it possible. And I see God moving for you. I see God moving on your home. I see God moving in your husband. Amen. That you have given it on your husband. I see God changing that man around. I see God turning that wife around. I see God turning that child around. I see God moving on your where you live. I see God moving on your location. I see God moving on your job. I see God moving in your business. I see God moving in your ministry. I see God bringing in changes. Amen. Hallelujah. And God doing it because he wants to encourage you. God's doing it because he wants to take you out your, uh, out the place of local bar that have nothing down and out. He's getting ready to make something out because he wants to show you who he is. And he wants you to tell people, I've been there. I've done that. And I was in an impossible situation and God took me from this impossible situation and turn around. And if he can do it for me, how much more he going to do for you? Amen. So it's an encouraging word to know that he's able to do a seed in the bar. Amen. Uh, a seed in the bar. More we think of as for according to the power that working us. And that power is the Holy Ghost. Facebook, are you there? I don't see no hearts coming up. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you there, Facebook? Amen. Hallelujah. So some hearts. Amen. Let me see. Are you there? Periscope is showing his heart. So God wants you to know that it's, it's turning around. The change that happened is turning around. Amen. Hallelujah. The predicament. Amen. You know, but you don't understand, Apostle. I do understand. I've been there, done that, amen, and, 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 and has, has been faced with challenges in my life, has been faced that it doesn't look good, but at the same time, I know that my God is able to turn things around, I know that my God is able to move those mountains, I know that my God is able to break those barrels raw, and I'm telling you right now, precious, that God is breaking those barrels walls that have been trying to hinder you and hold back, he's breaking the barrels raw, and he's moving those people up around you, that's caused confusion, he's moving those people around you, that's caused hindrance, you get ready to see the hand of God on your situation. Amen. You may don't see it, but his hand is on it to move for you like number four in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you there, Facebook? Give me some amen and yes over there. I, I don't see that. I see I see a uh, periscope but, uh, freezing up. They move it. But uh, are you there? I'm not seeing nothing on Facebook. Amen. Are you there on Facebook? 
Hallelujah. Are you there? Good, 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 good. So God is moving, hallelujah, on the situation. God is turning things around, hallelujah. God is bringing in changes. God is bringing in breakthroughs. God is bringing in miracles. God is moving in, in your job. Amen. They may think they got it, but they ain't got it going. Hallelujah. See, God moves when things don't look good. He would make it seem that it's not good. And that's when God's moving for you. That's when you get ready to move your destiny. See, we have to understand that that what it looks like is not what it is. What it looks like is not what it is. So he taking that what it, it don't look right and turn around and make it look right. See, you get ready to move in a place like never before. You get ready to see the changes in a place like never before. You get ready to see a turnaround like never before. I see these things happen. Amen. I see the breakthroughs. I see the miracles. Hallelujah. Some of you been down and depressed. That is not God's. It's not God's will for you to be down and depressed. Amen. For God did not give you the spirit of fear, but a power, of love, and a sound mind. When you, oh, an apostle, I don't have a relationship with God. It's never too late to have a relationship with God. Because he accepts you just you are. See, the problem is you're trying to change before you get in there. You're trying to fix yourself up before you get in there. And you can never put yourself in a place to change yourself for God. Uh, only he can change you. Only he can put things in order for you. Only he can do those things. He wants you to learn to trust him. He wants you to learn to depend on him that he got you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That he's moving in your situation in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he's able to do over and above. More than we can imagine and think. He's able. You are being challenged in your faith. You've been challenged in your situation. You've been challenged on your circumstances. Whether or not to receive it. Whether or not to believe it. Don't look at the condition. Don't look at the predicament. Don't look at what people say. Surround yourself with people that believe what God is saying. Let me say this. Surround yourself with people that believe what God is saying. Amen. You've been surrounded with negative people. You've been surrounded with jealous people. You've been surrounded with people who don't believe that God can take those mountains in your life and destroy it. He can take those giants in your life and destroy it. You say, well, I feel like I'm in the lion's den. But yeah, Daniel was in the lion's den. What happened? God came in the lion's den, sent the angels in the lion's den and made sure that the lions did not touch him. So when you may be in the den, I'm coming to tell you that God will send the angel in charge over thee to protect it. They would not be able to destroy your kill. Even though the enemy tried to go around like a roaring lion, but God is not going to let him destroy you. God is not going to let him kill you. God is not going to let him uh, deceive you, uh, take away Way that he's already had for you. That's the kind of God I serve. So don't look at the, the condition you're in because before you uh, before you come out the den, you get ready to go in the palace. And so you say, well, why would I be in a den in the lions? And why would I be among the the lions that want to kill me? Why I want to be a uh, why would he put me among the lions that want to destroy me? But you have to understand that the 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 setup that God is doing to show who he is that no matter what it looks like no matter what it seems like that you can share that with someone else I was in that predicament. I was in that shape. I was in that place. Amen. And I feel like I was all alone. But I come to tell you that you are not alone what you're going through right now. Hallelujah. Let me say this again. You're not alone. So don't fret yourself of what they're doing. Don't be image of the workers of nigga because they're going to be cut down. They're going to cut down each, they're going to be cut down in pieces. They're going to be cut down. While you going up, they're going to be cut down. But see, you got to understand this, that when it doesn't look right, when it doesn't sing right, and even though you try to do right and try to uh, try to stand in there in righteousness in God through Christ Jesus, that is when God's moving. Amen. So He's He got it that way. He got the enemy thinking that He's He's winning, but at the same time, God is letting you know you have won. Hallelujah! You are winners. Amen. So don't take the negativity of looking at it what it is. Don't listen to all that negative talk. Don't listen to all that talk. Say it's not going to work. And I come to tell you, it is already working because God is working on your behalf. God is moving on your behalf. God is changing on your behalf. Hallelujah. Some of you are going to see things happen for your faith that you never thought is going to happen. Let me say this again. Because you choose to believe and receive what he says, he's going to show you some things that you never thought is going to happen. Because now your mindset is beginning to change. Your mindset is not the same anymore. Amen. You are asking God to give you the wisdom and to give you the understanding. You say, well, God, I didn't never understand why this happened before. I didn't know why I go through, but now I understand. Now I see because I didn't like it. I didn't understand it, but I see now that you had a plan. I see now because your grace was working on, on my behalf. Your grace was moving on my behalf. Amen. There's going to be a, such an abundance of mercy of overflowing grace in your life because see when, when sin abound, when things are grace abounding more. And so grace is going to establish 
and establish the blessing upon your life. It's going to bring in so much favor. Amen. It's going to be such an overflow that you're going to say, well, God, is this you? Amen. And you know it's him. And that's what he wants you to think. He wants you to see in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's going to be such a divine power that's going to be granted. To us in everything pertaining our, pertaining our life and godliness. First, Second Peter one third says that His divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. In other words, He already predestinated for you to have everything, to have the best. Amen. Amen. To see the best and to have the best. Amen. And so He also He has blessed us with every spiritual blessings. In Ephesians 1, 3, he's already blessed us. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he's already has blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In other words, the blessing has to be done in the spirit realm before it happened in the natural. Now, when people get it in the natural before the spirit, it does not lie. It doesn't last. And then at the same time, they don't have peace. But because you have your child of God and you have accepted Jesus Christ, amen, as your Lord and Savior, he has blessed you in the spiritual blessing. And so when the spiritual blessing is blessed first, that what you need in the natural is going to last. Amen. It's not going to be taken away. It's going to last for a long time. And so that's what God is doing. He's taking you and blessing you in the spiritual blessing that in the natural that it's going to last a long time. Amen. So you say, I'm at a point that doesn't look like. Amen. So anytime he blesses you, you say, well, it looks like it's hot. So he's testing your faith. You in a fire of furnace like the Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach. Amen. Because you choose to trust God. You choose to rest in the Lord. You choose to believe in God. And you choose not to compromise. You choose to trust God. I'm not going to uh, uh, switch and uh, and uh, tur- twist because everything is not looking my way. And everything is not going my way. I choose to trust God. And because you choose to trust God, when you go in that furnace of fire, you are not going to be alone. Amen. You are not going to be burnt. You are not going to be touched. You're going to come out as pure gold. If it did for Shadrach, Abednego, to go and Meshach, how much more are you gonna do for you? He told the king, they told Nebuchadnezzar, say, if our father does not live uh, deliver us, we're still gonna serve. And so, in other words, you cannot stop us and to trust God because we know that our blessing comes from Him. We know that our healing comes from Him. We know that our miracles come from Him. So no matter what you're trying to do, we are not going to turn our back on God. So you at that place right now that God is testing your faith and your love for Him. What are you going to do when everything looks like you at the uh, your ends? Everything is at the wall. You at the wall, standing at the wall. You at wit's end, and everything is not going your way. Everything don't look good. Everything don't smell good. Everything don't seem good. What you going to look? Are you going Gonna trust God? Are you gonna let the enemy come and tell you anything? No. The, the the Hebrew boys did not let that happen. They trust God. Amen. And so when when Nebuchadnezzar sent the man to check on them, they said, "Wait a minute." They end up praising the they end up they end up singing. But wait a minute, they're not alone. There's a fourth person in there with them. I can't understand. I put three people in in that furnace of fire. But I look, there's one more. And 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 then at the same time, he he told told the king, "They're not the fire is not touching them. Nothing is touching them. They end there singing. They end there rejoicing." And so God said, "You may be in the furnace of fire right now. You begin to praise God anyhow, because let me." Tell you something, precious one. You are not in this fire by yourself. Jesus is with you. Hallelujah. He's right there in the front of the fire. And you coming out on top. You're not coming out burnt. You're not coming out down. You're not coming out sick. But you're coming out on the top. See, the plans was to come for, for you to be destroyed. The plans were for you to come out at the bottom. The plans for you to be burnt. The plans for you to give up. But I come to tell you this morning that God's going to blow your mind because He's able to do. A, a scene above. He's going to have your enemy in on. He said, I don't believe that this happened to her. I don't believe this happened to him. When I come to tell you, believe it or not, God's going to say, I'm right there. If he said that he would not leave you and forsake you, he means just what he says. He's not going to leave you in that furnace by yourself. He's not going to leave you in that fire by yourself. He's not going to leave you alone. He's not going to leave you by yourself. Well, you don't understand, Apostle. I'm right at my end and look like nothing going with honey. That's when God moved. He don't move when everything look good. He moves when everything don't look good. You get ready to walk into your destiny. You get ready to be blessed over and above like never before. You get ready to see the changes like never before. Because you choose to trust God. And because you choose to trust God, you get ready to see the miracles happen in your life that you never thought was going to happen. You get ready to see the movies going to happen in your life. You get ready to see your uncle. Somebody been praying for the uncle. But I'm telling you, that Uncle Roger that you've been praying for, he's getting ready to be moved. He's getting ready to be changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But but possible. It doesn't seem like it looks like all 
hell breaking loose in my home. All hell breaking loose over there. Things are not looking the way it's supposed to. Things are not changing. Amen. That's when God moves. He doesn't move when things looking good. He moves when things don't look right. When things don't look like it's coming away. But I come to tell you that God is moving right now. God is bringing a change right now. God is bringing a breakthrough right now. God is moving right now on your situation. Hallelujah. I see God moving on your job. They tried to do a dirty work upon you. They tried to come against you. They tried to make you feel worthless. They tried to make you feel that you're inadequate. They tried to make you feel that you was an out, uh, 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 outcast. But I, that's okay. You don't belong into the inner circle because you are different. You are unique. You are wonderful and fearful is made by God. So that's why you don't fit in with them. Amen. God don't want you to fit in with them because he got a plan for you. He's getting ready to show off to you. He's getting ready to show your enemies who he is to you. That's why he didn't want you to fit in. That's why he don't have them to love you like you want them to love you. Amen. Hallelujah. But you got to love them and forgive them anyway. You are moving in a place you've never been before. You are moving in a different location. I'm not talking about in a, in a home or a different place. I'm talking about a different location in the spirit realm. See, see, God had to allow things to happen in your life to take you to that new realm in the spirit. If he would have let you stay there, what would happen? You would stay there and the enemy would destroy you. So don't look at it. Don't look at your predicament and say, I don't know why that I'm in this right now. Understand that God's getting ready to promote you. Understand that increase is coming to you. Understand that God's getting ready to raise you over above. Understand that God's getting ready to, you're getting ready to live in abundance because of grace. Hallelujah. Because it's your time. Hallelujah. You may don't feel like your time. You may don't seem like your time. You may say, it's not the time what I think it is. It's not what it looks like. But that's how God does. He got the enemy food. He's the, he's fooling the enemy, making thinking that he's winning, but he's not winning. He can't win and touch you. He told he tells him, "Have you thought about her? Have you thought about him?" He said, "How can I think about him? Because you got a wall around him, and so it looked like everything from the east to west to the north and the south is coming at you one way. But God said, "Don't worry about it, because I'm getting ready to show up. I'm getting ready to show off. I'm getting ready to turn that thing around where you thought was impossible. I'm getting ready to move those mountains out the way. I'm getting ready to move those shackles out the way. I'm getting ready to move everything that needed to get out the way for you." You can see that my hand is upon you. Hallelujah. You get ready to see the changes coming in your life. Hallelujah. You get ready to see the breakthroughs coming in your life. Some things you didn't ask for, he's going to give it to you because you choose to believe and receive. Who am I talking to right now? Hallelujah. See, the enemy say no and God say yes. Hallelujah. God has the first and last says your life. It ain't over till God says so. Don't you give up because things ain't working that way. Don't you turn your back on God. He's not turning his back on you. Don't you say, well, God, I, 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 I might as well. No, no, no. That's when you need to press in even more. That's when you need to press in. Don't look back. See, a lot of times we just looking back and we need to press in more. Come on, somebody. See, sometimes you're just pressing in and you keep looking back. And don't be like Lot wife. She was trying to press in, but she kept looking back and she turned to the pillar of salt. And see, that's the problem. A lot of you pressing in, but you keep looking back. You said, what if it doesn't work out? What if it doesn't change? What if it don't turn out? What you worry about? The hell with the devil what don't work. You know that if God be for you, who could be against it? Know that God can not lie. Go, know that the Lord is the same today as yesterday. Know that God can move those mountains out of your way. Know that God can turn things around. Know that God can heal your body. Know that God can heal your marriage. Know that God can deliver your children. Know that God can deliver your loved ones. Know that God can deliver you at your impossible situation where the devil meant evil. That God can turn around and make it good. Know that God is what he say he is. Hallelujah. He is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man repent. Heaven has spoken it. Will he not do it? So the word repent means that he a Turn this away. He turned it away from you. That the changes come in your life. Amen. That the movement of God will move even greater. Hallelujah. And I see God is turning things away from around you. He's bringing in the change. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. You have to understand that, you know, the enemy is going to make it seem. Thank you. Thank you. He's going to make it seem that it's impossible. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, God is working on your behalf. Hey, man, I know there's a fight right now. That's the enemy because he don't want you to uh, fight. Means fight the good fight of faith. I know there's a, there's a, uh, things, issues in your life is happening and you don't like it. Don't hang in there because see, the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. It does not come when everything looking good. It comes when things don't look right. Look like it's impossible. Look like God is not doing nothing. But I come to tell you this morning, God is moving on your behalf. Hallelujah. He's moving in your children as well. He's moving in your stubborn, rebellious child that you got don't want to change. But honey, God's getting ready to change that boy around. Hallelujah. You've been praying for your 15 year 
year-old son. You've been praying for your 24-year-old son. You've been praying for your 35-year-old son. You've been praying for your 45-year-old son. But I've come to tell you that God's going to move from hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. There's nothing impossible God can do. Hallelujah. And that nephew of yours, that stubborn, bullheaded nephew of yours, thank you, know it all. He's getting ready to come in, said the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You're getting ready to see the change. And God is getting ready to move on your sister. Some, this person got a sister. And you can't tell her nothing because she thinks she know it all. But honey, God's getting ready to change her. God's getting ready to save her. He's getting ready to deliver her. And she's going she, she gonna to be surprised because she thinks she know it all. She thinks she know the word. She know, she she better. She thinks she's better than you. And she thinks she's better than anybody. Amen. But God's getting ready to break her and hum her down. And you're going to see your sister. And you're going to say, this is my sister. I know how my sister was. This is my sister. And God said, yes, this is your sister. Amen. He's going to break and humble down. She want baby to say the things she used to say. She want baby to hurt your feelings and make you feel that, you know, you don't, just because she, your sister, uh, your older sister, that she's better than you and she knows better. But I come to tell you that God's going to shake her up. Amen. Hallelujah. And you, you thought that it's never going to happen. God's going to shake up your sister and the things that she used to say, she want baby to say it because God is moving. God is moving on your behalf. He is He's bringing the breakthrough. He's bringing the change. Amen. Amen. What you thought wasn't going to be changed, God said, I'm getting ready to change for you. Hallelujah. Somebody give Amen. God praise. Somebody give God praise right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. You've been wondering. You've been thinking. Say, well, God, is it really going to happen? And I come to tell you, yes, it's going to happen. He's doing it right now for you. He's removing all those things that were held up and he's opened up new doors. You see, God has to shut doors. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm listening to Bishop Jacob talking about dispatch brings you in uh, uh brings you into the uh the uh, to the uh to the destiny of the blessing amen and so he allowed these circumstances to happen in your life for you can trust him amen see a lot of people say they trust in God but they're not trusting God they only trust God when they need some but God said he allow it for he can put you in that position that you will see say oh my word hallelujah who else? I have never seen God move this way. He's doing that for a reason because he's teaching you how to trust him. He's teaching you how to believe that no matter what the condition is, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it seems like, that he's moving right now on your on your circumstances. Can you take it? Amen. Hallelujah. Who am I talking to right now? Amen. I'm getting this out my, my face. Amen. The hair out my face. So he's changing things around. When you say, Apostle, it doesn't, it doesn't look like he changing things. You don't look at what it what it doesn't look like. You stand on God's word. Amen. The Bible says, Who reports shall you believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to believe what God says. Amen. And that's what God says. Believe what he says. Amen. He got you, baby. He got you 100%. He got you 150%. He got you 365%. He got you 1,000%. He got your back. I know that anybody got you is God got you. Amen. I can't do what God can do. You can't do what God can do. Only he can do it. And so he's moving on your behalf. He's turning things around. He's changing things for you because he's seen that you've been through. He's seen that you suffer a lot. And you know, we're going to suffer. But the thing about it, we won't be suffering long. So he are moving for you. He's conditioned things for you. And it may not be what you want it to be, but it's done the way that he says. Amen. He said, I will bless them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will bless them in the spiritual blessing. In other words, when you accept Jesus Christ, you automatically in, in the blessing because that grace is upon you, his grace upon you. And what grace is doing is resting upon you to have peace. What grace is doing is, is giving you that uh, 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 more of a peace and joy that you know that you trust in God, you waiting on the Lord, you resting. And so you in that spirit of great expectation, you made him understand. So I'm waiting on God. Amen. And it may don't seem right. It may don't look right. But you wait on God because you know that God is doing something for you. And you say, now God, it doesn't seem like it's working. It doesn't seem like you're working. But I come to tell you, God is working on your behalf. God is moving on your behalf. Hallelujah. And the change has already started. But you say, Apostle, but it doesn't look like the change. But that's how he does things. He make it look like it's no change. He may it look like it doesn't. But God is working on your behalf. Who am I talking to right now? Hallelujah. He's moving in, in so speedily that he will to blow your mind hallelujah he's moving so that you say well i never thought that it was going to happen to you but that's how god does it he got you to think that it never happened to you i'm sweating amen hallelujah i'm sweating it's hot amen hallelujah this is light it's hot praise god but that's okay i have to see what i'm doing i want you to know that he is he is amen what you say well i can't understand that why did this person get that promotion and I was well experienced for that person. But see, you got to understand, he would let the enemy get, get the position and make a fool of themselves 
and, 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 and they will reap the consequences. And so he got you a better position. He got something that's going to last. Amen. So God is putting you in a place. See, God's going to take you to the top of the list. Where they have put you at the bottom of the list. God's going to be ready to take you at the top of the list. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you come up that lion's den, you get ready to get promotion. When you come out of the fire furnace, you get ready to get a promotion. You get ready to get a place you never had before. I see a lot of you got a lot of potential in you, in the spirit realm that God placed in you, and the enemy has lied to you and say that you're never going to be equipped to be that. But I come to tell you the devil is a liar, and there's no truth in him. Hallelujah. God is not going to say something and do something if he's not going to uh, uh, He's not going to break it to pass. He's not going to do what he says because God cannot lie. So he's already already set you up behind the scene to have this amen and when you say apostle it doesn't look it when well, it always don't look it but he's already don't set you up behind the scene for you to have it amen so the enemy is always is going to use a strategy plan to 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 discourage you and make you think that god is not moving but i come to tell you this morning that god is moving in more ways than you can imagine hallelujah somebody give god the praise this morning somebody give god the praise hallelujah amen. see when you begin to praise him in the midst of all the challenging that you're going through and miss all the hell you're going through. Some of you have been going through a lot of hell lately. Amen. Hallelujah. And you haven't been saying anything because you you know you want you don't want everybody to know that you're going through. And I understand that because see you you know people will say to say oh you're going through something it don't look like right and you know they you know they say negative so they don't have no encouraging word. Amen. But I come to tell you that that what you're going through is just temporary. Hallelujah. He's pulling you out into a better place. Let me say this again. He's pulling you out into a better place. That place that you never thought could ever happen in your life. So he's pulling you out to that old place and to a new place. Let me say this again. He's pulling you out into that old place and to a new place. Amen. He's taking you out your comfortable zone. See, faith makes you uncomfortable. Amen. So when you trust in God, faith is not going to, the true faith and trust in God is not comfortable. It's uncomfortable. It puts you in a position that you have no choice but to trust God. You may not understand a lot of things, but you say, I'm going to trust you in how I'm going to depend on you in how I'm going to lean on you in how, amen. It, I don't feel like doing it. Amen. So what are you doing? You're not basing on your feelings. Amen. Hallelujah. You, you, you're seeing the way God wants you to see it. Hallelujah. So you understand that you're not basing on your feelings. Amen. You're not basing on that. Amen. So he's, he's, he's showing you don't base it on your feelings. Don't base it on that. Understand that God has examined you. So you're taking an examination and you know, your test is multiple choice. So he gave you a multiple choice test. That's what's going on right now. And one of the worst tests is the multiple choice. Amen. People say the multiple choice is, 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 is easy. No, it's not. Because all the answers sound alike. So what God is doing, he's testing your faith to trust him. Okay, I'm giving you A, B, C, D, E, and all the light and all above. Which one are you going to choose? Amen. Do, they may sound good, but one of, them, a, one of them is the one is the answer. So God is teaching you how to walk in the spirit, how to flow in the spirit. Amen. See, God takes the foolish thing and find the wise. In other words, when God puts you on a test of the multiple choice, it's not going to sound good. It's not going to look good. It look like all, all the answer sounds good. Amen. But there's one answer. It may sound like the other answer, but there's something unique by that answer. It's the right answer. Hallelujah. Well, how would you know it? The Holy Spirit is going to show you. Amen. See, the problem is a lot of you have been walking in the flesh instead of walking in the spirit. So the leading of the Holy Spirit is going to show you, say, this may sound good. This may be the answer, but this is not the answer to your problem. This is not going to solve you're not going to come up with 100. You're not going to come up with 99. You're not going to come up with 89 with the passing score to get where you're at. Amen. So he's showing you that every test you take, don't. there's five answers to your tests. Amen. That don't mean that all those five answers are right. But he wants you to understand how to learn, how to flow in the spirit, that one of those answers is going to be the best one because it's different. Even though it sounds like the other one, but it's unique because the Holy Spirit said, yes, it sounds like, but that's not the right answer. Amen. And so when you pass that test, amen, you say, well, it sounds good. It may be all of them. Yeah, it may be all of them. But you got to understand, you got to allow, the, you got to stop allowing the Holy Spirit 
Spirit to teach you. You got to stop allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. You got to stop allowing the Holy Spirit to direct your life. See, you've been trying to do it yourself and you're trying to depend on people instead of depending on the Spirit of God. Because the Bible says that them that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. They are totally dependent on the Holy Spirit. The the uh, trust in the Holy Spirit. They're totally uh, uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to counsel them, to uh, uh, lead them. Amen. And so that's what God is saying. As you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, as you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, you can't go wrong but do and fall into the place where you need to be at. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, is the enemy coming and trying to trick you because he's a trickster. Amen. Amen. We don't celebrate Halloween. That's a trick and treat in the, uh, that's of the devil. And so he'll come in and try to bring in a trick and make it look good. But then the Holy Ghost can say, no, that's not it, Lois. No, that's not it, Mary. No, that's not it, John. But it looked like the answer. But he said, that ain't the answer that you've been waiting on or your prayer. That ain't the solution you've been waiting on. That ain't the, that not it what I have for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And so the Holy Ghost is going to immediately show you and say, that is not the one. Hallelujah. So you're going to be able to pass those tests that you're taking. Hallelujah. You're going to come out 100 foot of 100 in the victory. Instead of having 88, you're going to have 100. Everyone right. Because you choose to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. You choose to allow the Holy Spirit to direct you. Amen. So when you're direct by the Holy Spirit, you can't help but be on top. See, a lot of you been allowing a people to lead you. You've been allowing other things to lead you. You've been allowing your circumstances to lead you. Amen. Amen. And you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. That's why you can't pass that test. That's why you keep taking that same test over again because you are trying to do yourself. You are trying to figure out yourself. You are trying to let people show you and those people that you are trying to show you, they're not even walking the Spirit. So you, what are you doing? You repeatedly taking the test over and over again. You can't get that position. You can't get that promotion because you, you trying to let someone tell you, or you trying to let somebody help you to cheat on the test. And see, the worst thing you can do is cheat on your faith. Remember I say people cheat on the faith and say they got the faith. They don't really have the faith. They cheat on the faith because they want everybody to know they have the faith. What, they, what do you mean they're cheating? They're trying to steal somebody else's faith to work for them. Amen. Because they, they can't, they, they don't have the faith to believe. So they try to cheat and mean to take away from somebody's faith that if I take their faith, maybe it worked for me. No, you got to learn to trust God for yourself. You got to learn to rely on God for yourself. You got to learn to depend on God for yourself. You got to know that you know by the Spirit and be knowledgeable and have the revelation by the Holy Spirit that this is God speaking. Amen. That you will not be ignorant. That's why he said, my people perish because of lack of knowledge, me, lack of understanding. It's a lack of knowledge, me, ignorance of stupidity. They don't, they're not aware of it because they're not seeing the way they're supposed to see it. And see, God wants us, what God is releasing, that seer anointing. Amen. The seer anointing. What is the seer anointing? It's a prophet. Amen. Not that you're going to be a prophet, but he's going to give you that seer anointing that be more, have that gift of discerning. Amen. Not just have the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge, but also have that discerning. Say, hey, 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 this is not a God. Uh, 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 uh. Amen. That's another trap that the enemy trying to put me in. That's another trap that my enemy trying to, uh, uh, try to put me in. I'm not going there no more. I understand it more. And so God wants you to see in the spirit realm that there is hope for you. There is help for you. Amen. There is the answer, the right answer. He's not going to give you the wrong, crooked answer. He's going to give you the right answer because he wants everything to fall in place in your life because he wants you to stop walking into your destiny. He wants you to stop walking into the miracles. He wants you to stop walking into the blessings. He wants you to stop walking into the breakthrough. It's your time. It's your season to see the things. Amen. He he knows that you've been there. We all have been there. I don't been there without. And I didn't have nothing. And I, I didn't know how it means. But I passed the test. When the test came to me, the month of choice, test came to me to uh, uh, to figure out the answer. I didn't try to figure out. I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, I need your help. Amen. I don't understand all this complication, all these complex things. Amen. I don't even understand these simple things. Amen. Because sometimes the simple things could be complex and be uh, uh, very uh, contrary to what God is saying. So I need you to help me to understand. I need you to help me to be knowledgeable what I'm doing, that I will not be no lack of knowledge, that I will not be no lack of awareness, but I have that reassurance that this, I know this is the right answer to my problem. Hallelujah. Did anybody catch on what I'm talking about? Amen. So you got to understand, stop trying to have somebody to help you cheat on your test, to pass the test. 
Ask the Holy Spirit to help you pass this multiple choice test. I mean, the multiple choice of your life, whether, whether this is the right answer to what you're going through right now. Hallelujah. And see, that's, that's, the, that's, that's it right there. And see, we have to understand when we allow him to give us the right answer, we don't have to keep going in that circle of that same situation. Because Nahum 1 9 said, these afflictions will not return again. If you look at the book of the Old Testament, do you see a lot of those people, those characters went to the same test? No. Once they passed that test, it was over. You didn't see Moses had to go back and, and take the, the children back to it, uh, uh, Egypt and, and take them out again, amen, and go to the Red Sea again. No, he didn't have to do it. He passed the test, amen. That test was over. He knew that his God was able. He knew that his God was do and able to do and see it above. He began to trust God. He began to take God's word, amen. And that's what God is saying. When you begin to take God's word, you're going to see the, the movement of the supernatural of his in your life and before. And that's what he wants you to know. He wants to, you to know that he wants to move in your life supernatural. Stop looking at and stop dwelling on the past. See, a lot of you have not let go. The, the, the issue is that a lot of you still you can't rest in God because when you rest in God and in and, 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 and any of your situation, he can't have a move for you. But see, your struggles are still there because you're trying to do it yourself. Amen. Amen. When you say, well, we have struggles. Yeah, we have struggles. But then a lot of those struggles that we don't have to keep going through. Amen. And then you say, well, you know, I'm going through this stuff. No, you ain't learned to let go. You still holding on to things. He said, let it go, let it go. If you read the Bible, it said, let it go. When the men of those people let go of the things, they did not experience the same thing. Look what Jacob did. Jacob didn't want to be a, a supplanter. He didn't want to be a, a trickster, a liar. Amen. What he did, he lied, you know, to his father that he was Jacob, uh, was Esau. He wasn't. Amen. He took his brother, uh, uh, um, first wife. He said it had to be a change. And so he's, I'm, go I'm not going nowhere until you bless me. In other words, I'm going to pass this test. You got to get to the place of that bulldozer of faith. Say, I'm not going nowhere until I pass this test. I'm not going on this test no more. I'm not going in these circles no more. I'm not going this route no more. I'm not going this change no more. A change got to come uh, uh, with me that I want to change. I got to be serious with what I'm talking about. I just can't say it. I got to mean what I'm saying. And that's when you got to get to the point. Say, I mean what I'm saying. I'm not going to that route no more. Hallelujah. And so Jacob wrestled with the angel. Wrestled so when uh, 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 the Lord came, like an angel, uh, came, amen, and said, I'm not going to let you go until you're blessing. And see, a lot of you get lazy. You want God to move right then because you can't take the, you can't take the suffering. You can't take the pain. Amen. He did, he did it all for you. Don't have to go to pain. Even though it may be painful, but Jesus took all the pains that it won't be too painful. We make it painful more because we, we, we begin to stop trusting him. He wants you to trust him. Don't look at your impossible situation. Come on, somebody. Jacob said, I will not go nowhere until you bless me. I'm not going nowhere until you bless me because I need a change in my life. I need I need a change. I need a change. Amen. You see, a lot of people are so comfortable in what they're doing. Amen. They don't want to change. They say, what if I change is this going to happen? They lose their faith. They like the man with the, with the 10, 10 talents and then some of the books with the thousand talent. Amen. They said, what if I know how my master is? If I do this way, I don't want to make him mad. It, he was living in fear. Amen. And a lot of you living in fear. A lot of you walking in fear. Your faith has disappeared. And the Bible says faith pleases God, not fear pleases God. Faith pleases God. See, stop looking at what it is. Amen. Well, you don't understand, Apostle. I, I, this is hard. It's hard on a lot of us. But see, he made it easy with grace that we don't have to make it hard. You make it hard because you didn't choose. There was grace. There was mercy and faith. Amen. Uh, all together in his love, but you choose something else of grace with this here, but if, and love is with what is, yeah, amen. So you choose the one, the, the wrong answer, amen. And that's what you've been choosing, the wrong answer, because you are not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. You are not allowing the Holy Spirit to give you the answer. You're trying to figure out because you want to make that right move and you may make the wrong move. Hallelujah. Who am I talking to right now? You say, I want the right move in my marriage. I want the right move with my children. I want the right move on my job. 
job. I want the right move in my business. I want the right move in my ministry. I want the right move in my life, period. You have not made the right move because you are not led by the Holy Spirit. See, you're not allowing the Holy Spirit, who is our counselor, who is our advocate, who is our teacher, who is our backup, who is Jesus himself with no limit. Hallelujah. You are not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. And that's why you're in the mess that you are. And see, God wants to put you out your mess and give you the best. Hallelujah. He wants to pull you out the best, uh, move you out your mess to give you the best that you have a message to tell someone. I've been there. I did that. And I tell you, there's hope. There's, it's a change. If you let the Holy Ghost do it for you, stop trying to figure it out. Try trying to do it yourself and allow him to do it for you. Come on, somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen. There's always going to be a multiple choice uh, uh, test for us. With answers that sound good. Where answers all sound the light. That don't mean those answers are the solution. You got to get in the spirit realm. You got to get the insight in the spirit realm and see what it is. Amen. See, you've been focused on the outside. You've been in the natural too long. You've been in the carnal mind thinking too long. And that's why you can't see it. And that's why you can't answer the right answer. Because you've been walking in the flesh too long. You've been walking natural. You're not led by the Holy Spirit. You're not allowing the Holy Spirit to take off the blindness of your eyes. You're not allowing the Holy Spirit to take the scales off your eyes. You're not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. You're not allowing the Holy Spirit to direct you. You're not allowing the Holy Spirit to show you. You're too busy because you have got impatient. That's why James said, count it all joy when you're falling into diverse temptation, knowing that it's the testing of your faith that work in patience. See, he got to test your faith. He's not testing your faith for uh, evil. He's not testing your faith for wrong, uh, uh, to do evil. He's testing your faith of love. Do you really love me? Then you'll trust me. Amen. But you don't understand that everything sounds good, God. But everything that sounds good is not really good. Hallelujah. He wants you to distinguish the difference of what is right and what is wrong. He's not telling you to distinguish what is right and in between and this wrong. That's not the God we serve. Because if you distinguish what is right and in between what's wrong, then you're not really serving God. You're not really walking in God. You're not really walking in the Spirit. You have become Luke with one, so He's going to spit you out. And that's why you can't get the problem solved. Because you say, well, what if you in between instead of say, what well, is evil? either right or either wrong. You've been in between long enough. You've been looking with one long enough. It's time to be on fire and hot. Not just say it, not just talk it, but live what you're talking about. Hallelujah. Because what happened is, and when you start doing that, then your faith, your faith becomes dead. That's a dangerous thing. Faith without work is dead. It means that the working in action to believe because faith does something about it. Amen. And so when your faith is activated, just like when you get a perm, you got to have that activation to make that perm work. Amen. The same thing when you, when you walk in faith, faith is one that activate grace. Faith was to activate your wall to believe and activate the uh, miracles in your life. Amen. So when you have that faith activate, the grace comes even greater. The faith of a, and greater uh, faith will be upon your life. Like never before, increase and in abundance. Amen. Over and above. And you begin to live over and above. You begin to live above your needs. That's what God wants you to start living above your knees. And see, you right here. Amen. And then you're going down here. And what you should be up there. See, it's time to get up, 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 and get even more up, up. See, you've been down there long enough. Amen. And so you're not really growing. You may be growing in different areas, but God wants you to grow in every area of your life. Hallelujah. He wants you to be a winner. Hallelujah. He said that, I, he said, the worst that I do not want, I do of my father. Jesus always said that because he trusts his Lord. So when he trusts his, his father, he knew that whatever happens, he knew that his father was able to do a seated above more than he think it asked for. Because that power that lives in himself can move those mountains, can turn things around when people say it's impossible. I don't know. I don't think it's going to work, uh, uh, ma'am. I don't think it's going to work, sir. No, it's not what you think. It's what God thinks. I mean, I'm not looking at what it is. I'm not looking at in my own eyes. I'm not looking in the flesh. I'm looking in the spirit. So God is saying it is time that you take off off those natural eyes and put on the spirit eyes. Amen. And begin to see in the spirit and stop walking in the flesh. Amen. Stop looking at in the flesh. Well, it don't look right. Everything is not going right. And you continue to look in the flesh. It never going to be right. Amen. Come on, somebody. You're never going to get the answer. <coughs> You're always going to get the wrong answer. In other words, all those multiple choice tests you've been taking. Amen. For you to get to that next place. You've been flunking it. You've been not passing it. And you're going in circles. And what happened? You get to a zone, the end zone, and look like no outlet, no way out. Well, you don't, God don't want you to be in the end zone with no way out. He made it possible that they, he will make a way out of no way. 
Amen. That's why he came personally, that you will find a way out. Even when it seems impossible, I will turn that way that don't look like there's not going to be anything. There's not going to turn out the way it is and make it be something. Amen. I did it. I made it possible for you to have it. That's why grace will make you rest. That's why grace is the assurance to have that continuing flowing of uh, 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 to that that the movement will be over and above. Amen. And the flowing that that struggle that used to be in that one area, you don't struggle in the area no more. You don't struggle in your finance no more. It was the place that used to struggle in finance because you never have enough. God, I need finance. I need some finance. You know, Holy Ghost told me, stop saying you need some finance. Take the limit off of God. Well, I need some. I know. I, 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 I need finance. I need above and over because I know you're able to bring above the what I need. Amen. Stop saying because you know what you're doing. You at that same little bench of faith, still asking the same thing. And see that little mustard seed grows into a big branch. You see, it's time to grow up and, and to mature in the Lord, not to look at what it is, but look at what God has already done, and look at what He's getting ready to do even greater. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Understand the Holy Ghost is the one that manifests the power. He resurrected Jesus. He put that seed in Mary that she conceived a child. He is the Holy Ghost that brought them out. It's the Holy Spirit that spit the red seed. And once you understand it's the Holy Spirit, he's, it's all about Jesus, then you'll see a change. Then you'll be able to pass the test. Amen. So when you got these multiple choice tests, is what, what God is giving you. Hallelujah. You will not be to see what you see. Let me say this again. You will not be to see what you see. Even though the answers all sound alike, even though the answer all look good and, and seem good, amen. You will not be seen because you're walking in the spirit and you're not, you're not, uh, uh you're, you're not, uh, it can't deceive you because you, you understand the difference that this sound good, but this ain't the answer. Amen. Hallelujah. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? You taking that much of a choice test to get to that next uh, level that God wants you to have to have more than enough. Amen. And then get to the next level. That what, What's the whole purpose of the level? That you have that peace. Because when you have peace and rest, in, God can help but bless you even more. The people that rest more in God, meaning that trust God more, those are the ones that's going to experience, amen, the dimension of levels they've never been before, of faith. Amen. They're not looking at what it is. Amen. They're resting in God. Amen. They're trusting in God. They believe it in God. They understand in what God is saying. They're not taking it lightly. They're taking it serious that what God say he would do, he going to do what he says. And the church say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So they no longer focus on what it looks like. They focus on what he's already said. They rest in the Lord. They trust in the Lord. Amen. They're looking at things in a different point. What are they doing? They're looking at the way the Holy Spirit wants them to look at it. Amen. Amen. Let me say this again. They're looking at it the way the Holy Spirit wants them to look at. They're not looking at it that way. They're looking at it the right way. Hallelujah. So everything they used to look at is over with. Amen. They're resting in God. They're trusting in God. They're depending on God. And everything else cannot come in and mess up what they believe. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And all of it, they know. Because what salvation does... It's the deliverance. It helps you to rest. When you have salvation in Jesus, you trust in Jesus. It helps you to rest at the assurance that you know that you know that when you take that multiple choice test, that even though the answers all sound alike, you know, when you take, they say the, uh, the best test is the multiple choice. No, it ain't. It's the worst test. That's why a lot of people flunk those tests because they put all answers sound alike. Well, this sounds similar to the other. Well, what is this the answer? And what is all above? They all sound alike. Maybe it's all above, uh, you know, uh, 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 all above. Maybe it's none above. Amen. And that is the trick when you, when you go into your test, the enemy will step in and try to make something is not to keep you from passing the test. And see, you are so close of passing this test right now because you've been going in circle, taking the same test over and over again. And you wonder why you can't get there because you're taking the same test over again. You should be at the place that you had enough taking that test over again. You should be at the place that, you know, I'm tired of going to that route where I've been going the same way. It needs to be a change. And see, God wants you to take you into high dimension and levels you've never been before. If he said in Ephesians, the first chapter, that the blessings, he's already has blessed you spiritually. So that what that means, the revelation is, means that when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the blessings are already automatic upon you because of his grace upon you. 
Amen. There's a river of water flowing us spiritually. Because when you're blessed spiritually first, that in the natural have no other choice but the last. And see why things are not lasting in your life? Because you're not looking in the spirit realm. You're focused more on the natural. You got to understand when, the, when you allow the Holy Spirit to direct you, when you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, when you allow the Holy Spirit to do what he's supposed to do, you can't help but fall into the blessing. You can't help but walk in victory after victory. Now, you say it's impossible to walk victory. Well, it wasn't impossible. Of myself in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, he made it possible. He made it easy. He came personally that we can be able to pass the test. That we were able to, when we are challenged, whatever giants, whatever come against us, we're able to get through no matter what. Because of his grace and mercy. Because he said we already blessed in the spirit realm. That means not material stuff, but the spirit dance, because that's where the battle is in the spirit realm. And see, when you win the battle in the spirit realm, whatever needs to be done in your natural, it's automatically going to come in the right way in the church. Say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So understand, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So he's going to try to come in and steal and destroy. He's going to try to come in and deceive you. Amen. When you're taking your test. Amen. Hallelujah. Because, see, he wants to cut off the opportunities that God has, has invested in you. Oh, my God. He wants to cut off the opportunities that God has invested in you. So a lot of you are going to be in a place that you never thought before. And a lot of you are going to live over and above your knees. Amen. See, he don't move on your knees. He move on your faith to believe. And because you're not thinking about your knees, you, you're thinking about your faith in him. So he's going to move you above it. So you are, what you mean, apostle? You already know that he's going to supply your needs already. Because now you see it now in the spirit more. Instead of the flesh. And so in the past, where you was tricked and lied to, where the answer all looked the same, where the answer all seemed the same, where they're all going to be the same, you, it can't do it no more because you are allowing the Holy Spirit to do it for you. You are allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. You allowing the Holy Spirit to be your advocate, your teacher, your intercessor, your backup. You allow the Holy Spirit to direct you. And so when you allow the Holy Spirit to direct you, you can't help but go right. Even though you're going to be challenged when you, you're going down that route of faith by grace. Amen. You still trust in God. Amen. Amen. You're not giving up easy. Amen. In other words, the enemy can't pull you back no more like he used to. Because you trusted in God no matter what. You may not understand everything. So you're saying in Romans 8, 28, say, I... I may not understand everything that's going on, but all things are working together. All things. He didn't say little things. So when he's telling you, see, we miss it. That one word, you overread the word of God. You don't take your time to read the word. It's important. Uh, 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 the word in that scripture may not be important to you. It's important to God. So he said all things, all, all. He didn't say some things. He didn't say a few things. He didn't say one thing. He didn't say seven things. He said all things. It means everything that he has ordained for your life. Everything he has put the blueprint. If he said he knew us before we was in our mother's womb, he already put the blueprints out. He already drafted the plans. Amen. Hallelujah. For what our life should turn out to be. But it's up to us to believe. It is up to us to receive it. So don't be tricked by the enemy when the when you are questioned on your test of your trial, your faith. Don't be don't be don't be deceived by the enemy when you're questioned whether or not this is the answer. You ask the Holy Spirit. That's why he's there. He said, I'll, I'll go away. And I'm not going to leave you confidence. I'm going to leave you with another comforter, just like me. And it was, he's going to bring in remembrance of what would Jesus would have did in a time like this. He's going to give you the answer, what you need. He's not going to confuse you. He's going to bring the truth out that you will pass the test and you will go further than you are. Amen. And so what we have to understand, when we start depending on the Holy Spirit and allow him to lead us, amen. Amen. He's going to lead us there. He's going to direct us there. And that's the problem. A lot of you are not allowing the Holy Spirit to do it. If the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead after the crucifixion, how much is he going to raise you, raise the dead stuff in your life? Amen. Amen. That's remind you of Ezekiel 37. He said this prophesy to those dry bones. Some of you need to prophesy. You don't need no prophet to wait on the prophet to prophesy. You don't need a man or woman of God to wait for you to prophesy. He has given you say, Paul said, I wish all were prophesied. You can prophesy over your situation. You can prophesy in the name of Jesus. Resurrect those situations and they can come alive. Amen. Because you got the greater one that's in you than the and he does in the world. You got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You can speak to that situation and it can rise up and be changed. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Even though that situation was crucified, but it had to be crucified in order to be raised up. To have the best. Amen. So God allow your situation to be crucified. That it can be raised up by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let me say this again. He allow your situation to be crucified. Amen. That it can be resurrected. Amen. So he allow you to be crucified like you on the cross. He allow your situation to be crucified. Amen. Amen. That he can resurrect and let you know. He will take your impossible situation. Hallelujah. And turn around and make it possible. Come on, somebody who I'm talking to. Amen. Amen. So when you start depending on the Holy Spirit, he the one is going to take you over and above. He the one going to take you in that place. Amen. So when you begin to look at, when you take that test, amen, it's a multiple choice in the spirit realm. You have the answer. You, you say, wait one minute. I recognize it. I'm not like of knowledge. I'm not like of wisdom. I'm not like ignorant of it. The Holy Spirit is letting me know this is not the answer. He let me know this is a trick of the enemy. Want me to thank this answer because he wants you to keep going backwards. He don't want you to let go of the past. He don't want you to let go of the things. He don't want you to let go of the circumstances. He wants to keep you in that place that you'll never get where you need to get at. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. So there will be a new eye awakening. No longer your eyes will be blinded of what you see. Your eyes will be opened what you see in the insight, in the spirit realm. See, before you was blinded, you couldn't see because you were focused on the natural. So you, when you take that test, you say, oh, all oh, this sounds good, but this, this is the answer right here. The spirit is telling me this is the answer. You can't trick me no more, Satan. That's when you begin to say, I recognize you. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You're not going to take me down there no more. I'm not going to entertain you. You see, you've been entertaining the devil so much. That's why you're not winning the case. That's why you're not passing the test. See, he likes to be entertained. And you've been entertaining him too much. In other words, you allow him to talk to you. You allow him to say, well, where's your God at now? If he was your God, then you wouldn't be in this. Where's your God at now? He would have moved that mountain. Where's your God right now? He would have turned that situation around. Where's your God at right now? Amen. You would not listen to that fool. Amen. You would ignore him because you know you would recognize it. Amen. Hallelujah. You ask the Holy Spirit, give me that gift of discerning of the Spirit. That I will discern what is good. That I will discern. There's no in-between of discerning that's either good or bad. That I will not be deceived no more. I'm getting ready to pass this test. I'm t- I had enough. See, when you get to the place that you had enough of taking the same test again, then God can take you to that level where he wants you to take it. Amen. Hallelujah. See, he don't want you to be right here. You see, people say, well, God wants you there. Uh, and, and there's no, there's no uh, retirement, God. There's always a growing process. There's always a, a, a growing uh, multiplication, always growing more and more. Hallelujah. So he never wants you to be in a comfort zone. Well, I'm going to sit back. I'm getting old now. I'm going to let the young people do it. And I'm going to sit back and relax. And, and you know, uh, I don't did all I can't do it. Oh, Arthur got me now. Oh, uh, Sugar Diabetes got me now. Oh, Pain got me now. Oh, Dementia got me now. You have opened the door and hit the wrong button of that test. You hit the wrong button means you, 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 you hit the wrong number. You hit the wrong letter because you assume that that was the right answer. And what happened, happened because of your assumption of wishful thinking, it brought you back where you was before. Amen? Amen. So there's no growth period. There's no maturing. So when that happened, you still on the milk. But at the same time, you want everybody to think you're on the, on the, on the, on the prime reel, on the highest point, on the best, but you're not. And so God said, I want to pull you out of there. I know where you're at. Don't you know I can take you from the deepest where you're at? If God took Joseph out the ditch, amen, and took him into the palace, how much more he going to do for you? Amen. How much more he going to do for you? He wants to prove to you what he can do. See, God is talking to you and letting you know that I want to take you out the ditch into the palace. I'm going to use your enemy to get you where you're at. He used your enemy. He told Jesus, he said, sit here at the right hand and I will make your enemy your footstool. In other words, I will use your enemy to get to you that place. You can't reach it right now, but I, they have what you need for you can get there. 
So I'm going to use them to help you to reach to that place. And that's what God is doing. So let the enemy say what they want to say. Because God's going to use them to get you where you need to get. Hallelujah. See, it's too high for you to reach. But he'll make a way. He'll go before you and make it smooth. Make the payments where it was crooked. Where it was out of order. He'll make it in order and make it better for you. So he wants you to stop looking at what it is. And start looking at what he can do. That way he said, if, if you start walking in the spirit and say, oh, give thanks to God for he is good and his mercy and do forever. And then First Thessalonians 5, 18 said, in all your circumstances and everything you do, start giving thanks for this is his will. You see, you're missing the one word will. Anytime the scripture said will, this is, that's what he wants you to do. It's not the, it's not talking about the law. He's talking about it's already been, been made to do that way. The grace, if you do what he said, the grace is going to take care of it. Amen. And it's going to continue rivers of flowing, of overflow in your life than before. It's going to go over above that there will no room enough that you're going to have to start giving away because you're going to have so much. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants you to be a giver that you have more than enough. And because when you be a giver, you are you you are helping someone else not to give up. Amen. When they see that on you, you what you doing? You helping someone else not to give up. Who I'm talking to right now? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm talking to myself. Much is talking to you. That that he is getting ready to take that and turn around. He's gonna take that dead and bring it alive. Amen. Hallelujah. So God has to kill the stuff in your life. To resurrect it and make it better than it was before. Oh my God. Let me say this again. God has to kill those dead works in your life. For he can resurrect it and make it better than it was before. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's some crucif cruci crucifixion, crucifixion going on in your life right now. He's crucifying that flesh. He's crucifying areas in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, Holy Ghost. He's crucifying areas of your life that everything could start coming better and resurrected and that it'd be better than it was before. Hallelujah. Because if he don't crucify those things in your life, you're never going to be in that place. You're never going to see the resurrection of Christ in your life with better things than you had before. Hallelujah. That it would be in such an overflow that when the enemy tried to come against it, he won't be able to stop because Jesus already did it for you that you'll be able to have more than enough. Hallelujah. That you will be in so odd. Even your enemy in art. Hallelujah. They'll be in so odd. Say really this is a blessed woman of God. Really this is a blessed man of God. Really this is a child of God. Because no man can do those things unless God with them. My God. I never seen nothing. In other words they're going to be in awe of thee. They're, they're going to feel God in you. They're gonna, the things they used to say about you. They won't be able to say it. Because they're going to see the blessing of God on your life. And it's, it's going to be rich and it ain't going to be no sorrows in there. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It's going to be joy in there. Come on, somebody. It's going to be peace in there. Come on, somebody. Uh, everlasting peace. And it's going to be more than you had before. So he's going to give you double for your trouble than you had before. Hallelujah. He may trip it. He may quadruple it. Whatever he may do to make it show them what he can do. Because you allow him. The Holy Spirit to raise you from the dead. Even though it was crucified, you allowed the Holy Spirit to crucify the things in your life. Because without the crucifixion, you won't have the everlasting life of an abundance, the overflow. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And without the crucifixion, you will not have the everlasting life of the overflow. The everlasting life to live forever and ever and ever with Christ Jesus. The, uh, after that, the abundance, the overflow, there will be more than enough. It'll be so much that you're going to have to bless others. It'll be so much that you have to gift others. It'll be so much that you're going to live even more than you thought you're going to live to your CC. You're going to live a great legacy like Abraham did. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So God allowed Abraham to go through those changes of crucifixion of his life to have better than he be able to live to his seed seeds. Amen. So what you're going through is temporary. It may be painful, but it's not that painful because Jesus did took all the pains on the cross to help it better. Amen. That make it much better for you. Amen. It, you know why it's so painful to you? Because you're not trusting him. Hallelujah. You know why it's hurting right now? You're not dependent on him. You're not relying on him. And see, when you begin to rest in him, that's the key. Because when you have the salvation of God in your life through Christ Jesus, you're going to rest. You're going to have joy. Well, it's hard. Of course, it seems hard. But when you start trusting him, you say, you know, I'm going to rest. I may not understand a lot of things, but I know he got my back. 
I know that all things, see that one word, all, 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 not no little things, not no one things, not no some things, but all is working on your behalf. Hallelujah. In other words, God is working on every detail of your life. He's moving in every detail of your life. He's not leaving nothing out. Amen. Hallelujah. So that when everything that has been crucified in your life, it will be resurrected the right way. Hallelujah. The resurrect in the everlasting. The resurrection life of overabundance overflow. Hallelujah. It won't be no more dead works. It will be alive and well. Hallelujah. You will be a mother of the land of the living. Not no dead no more. Be alive. Hallelujah. And you'll be blessed over above what everybody else is not being blessed. You're going to be blessed and say, how did she do it? How did he do it? They didn't do it their own. They allowed the Holy Spirit to do it for them. Hallelujah. Mary realized that she could have no child by herself, that she needed a, a man to have a child. You know, needed uh, 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 Joseph, who was her husband, betrothed, was assigned to be a husband, that she only could have a child. But when he, when the angel came said, hell, uh, Mary, that has found favor in God, and thou shalt conceive a child. Amen. He said, she said, how can it be? I have not been intimacy with Joseph, with no man. They know it. He said, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And breathe in life. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is the giver of life. The Holy Ghost is the one that resurrects the dead and bring it alive. The Holy Ghost is the one that manifests the power. See, when you let the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit all in one have his way, the King James and Holy Ghost for a reason because of the power. He's talking about no spiritual darkness. It means the power. Amen. The dunamis power. Amen. When you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, you can't help but go on top. You may be at the bottom right now, but when you let the Holy Ghost lead you, he's going to take you from the bottom to the top. Amen. Not in between to the top. Amen. Because you believe it. And when she started, she said, okay, I believe it. All things are possible. And when she believed, the Holy Spirit breathed on her and she conceived. Amen. That seed of a child come in. That man been trying to do it. The devil been trying to do it. You see, you got to understand the devil always tried to duplicate and copy what God does. But he never can do what God does. When he said, I will exalt myself above God and I rise above. And God said, oh yeah, I'm the one that, I'm the one that created you. And you got to understand how, how blessed you are. You was made above the angels. Amen. You was made the reflection of God. Amen. Praise God. So there, you will have more of rulership when you go there than angel does. Amen. They have to have by God. Amen. Even though God leaves you, but you'll be different because you are the reflection of God. So he had to crucify you. Amen. On the cross with Jesus. Because he didn't crucify you every day. You never become who God wants you to become. The things that he wants to resurrect in your life will never come alive. They will always be dead. I hope you're catching on what God is saying. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And, 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 and then you can speak to that mountain, be that removed, and be that cast into the sea and shall be done. Because now you allowing the resurrection power of Jesus Christ to manifest in your life through the Holy Spirit. You allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. You are allowing the Holy Spirit to uh, uh to get rid of those things in your life. Amen. You 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 in a different circumcision. You you a different circumcision that you cut off the old ways. You allow Him to circumcise the uh, cut off the old things. Amen. Because you're no longer under the law. You under the grace. Hallelujah. So you let Him cut off the things that was holding you back. Amen. That try to demand you dictate. If you don't do this, then it never happened. Because when that happened, that caused you to go back to sin. So you allowing the the Holy Spirit to circumcise and allow Him to do it by grace. That you know because of grace, because of His grace, that you're able to get through. You're able to make it no matter what. So you no longer looking at the circumstances. You no longer looking at the giants. You no longer looking at well, I'm crucified. I, I got the same crucifixion, but you're looking at but this crucifixion. There is a hope. There's behind there. There is a miracle. There is a breakthrough. There's a blessing. There's life behind there, and this life is abundantly. It's not the same as it was before. It's a different type of life in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't want to be a, you don't want to offend the Holy Spirit and let him leave you. That's why he said, don't quench the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't vest the Holy Spirit. See, when you don't let, the, do you not grieve that? And then, then everything start going over the above. But when you quench it, you get, don't offend him. And most of all, don't blaspheme him because blaspheme you turn your back on it and you, and you uh, uh, insult him. Amen. Don't do it because he already know what you need. He already got the plans for you. He already said, don't you know that when you get up and say, good morning, Holy Spirit, 
you really telling Jesus good morning. Whatever you want, I need uh, I need uh, uh, your wisdom today. I need your guidance today. I need your leadership and every leadership and everything. I need your leading in whatever I do. I mean, I need you to guide me. I need you to direct me. I need you to show me where I'm going. I mean, I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. And so, when you begin to say that every day, you will walk in the victory. Amen. Hallelujah. You will be the head and not the tail. You begin to lend many and, and not borrow. You begin to have more than enough. You begin, when you are challenging your walk in faith, you know that if God be for you, then you go up to the scriptures and what should you say when all these things that happen? If God be for me, who could be against me? Because you know the Holy Ghost is the, it's a life giver. It means that he will speak life over all your situation. You can resurrect and prophesy on all those circumstances. In all those dry areas of your life. And even though they was crucified, they began to raise up. Hallelujah. And he began to speak life over it. Amen. When it was drier and dead, they become alive. Amen. You begin to, you begin to walk into the newness. You begin to walk into the place that God wants you to walk in. It's no longer dry and dead out. Amen. It's a Alive, hallelujah, because you won the victory over all the situation. There was a time you didn't win, but now as you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, as you begin to Holy Spirit, you can't help but walk in the blessing. You can't help but walk in the miracles and the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And see, that's what He's getting you at a place that you walk in blessing and the overflow. He getting you in a place that it'll be more than enough. He getting you in a place that it may don't look right, and you may be challenging every error, but He getting the place that I'm going to trust God anyhow. I may not understand what's going on, but I'm going to trust God anyhow. I may be homeless right now. I may be without right now, but I know that God got a plan. Hallelujah. And his plan for my life is to have the best. His plan for me to prosper, not to harm me. His plan for me to live over and above. His plan for me not to live up under my knees. Amen. He got a better plan for me. He repositioned me into some place i never been before. He put me in a place i never been and Challenge. Even though I'm challenged, I know that God is with me. He's not going to leave me. He's not going to forsake me. He got my back 100%. Not like people say they got my back. I know that I know that he has my back. I know that I know that he's taking me out. I may understand that I'm going through these changes right now, but the changes is going to happen for the best. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I'm allowing him to change for me. I'm allowing him to do it for me. And so therefore, I'm coming out on top. Therefore, I'm coming out at the end. Therefore, I'm coming out at the Linda. I'm not going underneath, hallelujah. And when the enemy comes against me and try to screw things up and try to confuse everything, he's going to come against me one way, but he's going to have to flee before me seven ways. He's going to come in and try to start something, but he's going to leave confusion right away because he won't no longer confuse me. He won't no longer uh, uh, destroy things what God has me because I'm learning to allow the Holy Spirit to lead me. I'm learning to allow the Holy Spirit to direct me. I'm learning to allow the Holy Spirit to change things for me and change it for me. Come on, somebody give me praise. Hallelujah. Amen. So, He's crucifying the things in your life. And at the same time as he crucified the crucifixion, the spirit of crucifixion in your life, he's going to resurrect. Amen. Because he said, I am the resurrection. Though you was dead, you're alive again. So he's going to bring life into your situation. Where it was dead, he's going to bring life because he is the resurrection and life. Amen. He's going to take all the dryness. He's going to take all the weight. He's going to take all the hindrance and the blockage that were trying to stop what he has for you. Amen. What God has for you. He's going to begin to remove it out of the way. It's no longer going to be able to hold you down. Amen. Hallelujah. Because why? You're depending on the Holy Spirit to lead you. So the, at the same time, the Holy Spirit is giving you strength. Amen. And, and, and even though the battle, amen, and has left you weak. But he's going to strengthen you. It means the word strength means he's going to empower you to go on. He's going to empower you to press in. In words, he's going to release the, his power upon you. It's just like it said when he said you shall see power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. He's going to release his power upon you like never before. Your power can never stand. My power cannot stand. But he's going to release that supernatural power that you're going to be able to stand when you don't feel like it. Because you know that God is on your side. You're not going to let nothing separate you. You're not going to let nothing come between you and your relationship with God. Because you know that God has already worked it out for you. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. So understand that the Holy Spirit say, pass that test. I'm going to help you pass that test. Even though it doesn't look 
It doesn't look right now. It's complicated right now. But I'm going to help you pass that test. You're going to come on top. Amen. Even though the tests, all of them sound good. Even though the tests, they multiple choice. And all the answers sound like and all above. But I'm going to let you know it's a trick. Don't listen to it. But I'm going to let you know in the spirit realm, this is the right answer to your solution. Amen. You've been missing the right answer to your solution. Because you've been trying to figure out. And you've been trying to let everybody help you to figure out. And most of the time, everybody who's trying to help you figure out it's not walking in the spirit and you ask and then you wonder why they're not around you because god move them around you because they keep taking you to the same place amen backwards instead of forward and say you've been in reverse long enough hallelujah praise god you put yourself in park and then then after you put yourself up in the neutral trying to figure out where to go but you didn't wait enough of the rest in the Lord. You didn't wait enough to expect in the Lord. You didn't wait enough to trust in the Lord. You move too quite too fast because you get impatient. He said that he said, let patience have its weight in you. Amen. Let it have its fulfillment in you. See, so when you let patience <coughs> fulfill in you, what it's doing is increasing your faith more. It increasing your walk more. And what it does, it, it, it'll put you in a place. So when you let patient fulfilling your life you will never like them nothing no more hallelujah somebody give him praise where you was like before there will no be no life where you was like before there will no be slight where there was property before there will not be property you will have more than enough hallelujah because you're learning to trust in the Lord you're learning to wait on the Lord you're learning to depend on the Lord somebody give him praise hallelujah praise his holy name Amen. Hallelujah. You're taking upon what you're doing. You allow him to do a work in you to get rid of you, to get rid of your character, to be more of the character of Christ. You allow the Holy Spirit to do a work in you that you be more like him. Hallelujah. And the more you become like him, you ain't going to have everybody to understand you. You got to understand everybody ain't going to want to be around you. You got to understand everybody ain't going to want to do what they want to do. Hallelujah. Because the more you become like him, you become more enemies. You got more enemies. Amen. But you got more with you than you get you. The enemies going to turn to be friends because the Bible said when a man way pleases God, he even made peace with your enemies. So they have no choice to come and suggest the word of God because when you submit yourself to God and resist the devil, he have no choice but to flee. He have no choice but to get out the way. He got no choice to move all what he has, has planned against you. It will not work because you choose to trust God. Hallelujah. And the church say amen. Hallelujah. So that position that the Holy Ghost putting you in, amen, is, is advancing you at the same time to warn you of the danger that lies ahead, to warn you what the enemy trying to do, to warn you that it's a trick of Satan, to warn you that that's not right. Hallelujah. Let you see, to begin to see things the way God wants you to see in the spirit. Amen. See, a lot of you live in a double standard life. See, a lot of you go to church on Sunday. You go to Bible study, maybe on Wednesday or wherever they have it at. And you're really not in the Bible study. You just want somebody to know that you are a, a Christian, but you're not a Christian. Amen. You're a hypocrite. You're living a double life. Some of you got you got one foot in and one foot out, but you want everybody to know that you're all that, but you're not all that. Amen. Because you're not really allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. Because the Bible said, them that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Who is leading your life? Who is directing your life? Amen. Because when you let them lead your life, you can't help but live in above. And the church say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who are you allowing to live your life? Amen. But you want the attention. And you know why you can't live the life? Because you can't stand to be rejected. You want the attention. You want the approval for everybody else. You want everybody to know who you are. Amen. And that's why you can't get there because you want the approval of everybody else. Amen. But when you allow the Holy Spirit to do it. Honey, they got, they, it, it doesn't matter whether they approve it or not. They have no choice but to bless you. They have no choice but to give it. You know what happened? The Bible said the wealth of the sinner is later for the just. He began to have the sinner to bless you over the above. He would be begin to have the sinner to give you more than enough. Amen. Hallelujah. What you need, he will use them to give it to you. Hallelujah. You won't even have to ask it. Because why? You allowing the Holy Spirit to direct you. You allowing the Holy Spirit to crucify. So you in the Spirit right now crucifying and the circumcision of circumcising, cutting off things that should have been cut off for your life. Amen. And so now you allow Him to resurrect 
the power of him more in your life. And people are going to begin to see, say, I don't know, there's something about you. I want what you have. Then you are, not, then you become that living epistle, epistle testimony to others. Say, you know, I've been watching your life. Amen. And I don't know what you got, but I want what you have. That's what people need to say about you. What is you looking younger? You looking better? What do you have? Amen. What are you doing? Amen. What are you doing? You're learning to trust God more. You're learning to let the Holy Spirit to lead you more. You're learning to let Him direct you more. You're, you're cutting off all the foolish conversation. You're cutting off all the stupidity stuff that does not make sense. Amen. Your ears are open up that makes sense. What are you doing? You open up your ears to the spirit because the Bible says that he that has ear, hear what the spirit has to say. Come on, somebody. You cutting off all the negative conversation. You cutting off all the ignorant conversation. You cutting off all the foolish conversation. Your ears are open up for the spirit says. Hallelujah. And so, therefore, when everything else is not a God, it will not be able to enter because you have made in your mind, you choose to listen to what the Spirit has to say. The Bible says, he that has ear, hear what the Spirit has to say. Amen. And so now you begin to see things better than you was because you're not looking in the natural eyes. You begin to look in the spirit eyes. Hallelujah. Your eyes are focused on, not in the spirit eyes. Your eyes are not blind no more. You see more. You're allowing the Holy Spirit to remove the blindness. You're allowing the Holy Spirit to move the scales of your eyes. You're not letting the spirit of calorite a uh, uh, calorite, a uh, 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 glaucoma come in your eyes that the blind you, you can't see. It's gone. Amen. It can't touch your eyes anymore. Now you see in the spirit realm because when you see in the spirit realm better, you be able to see in the natural realm. So now you got more of a 20-20 vision in the spirit realm. Amen. You may be wearing glasses, but if you got a 20-20 in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the spirit realm, pretty soon you're going to have a 20-20 vision in the natural eyes. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The things that you were blinded before you won't be blinded anymore because now you see hallelujah you say oh our amazing grace our sweetest sound that saved a wretch like me i once was blind but now i can see hallelujah i was blinded in what i was seeing but now i'm not blinded in what i'm seeing because the holy spirit is showing me now to what to see. Amen. Before I tried to do it myself. Before I tried to let everybody do it myself. I didn't let the Holy Spirit to crucify things in my life. In order the right things could resurrect to be right. For I could live in abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. So now I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to crucify the things in my life. For I can live in the abundantly. So when he resurrects the things in my life. It's going to be over and above. And then I'm going to be in art in the immeasurable things. Because I believe now without seeing that God is able to do a seating and above. More than I think it asked for. According to the power that works in me. And that power is the Holy Ghost. Amen. So I'm seeing things more in the spirit. I'm walking more in the spirit. Amen. So my outcome of my life is going to be more prosperous than more because my support system, my support system is not for me. My support system comes from the Holy Spirit. He support me in the way that it's supposed to go. So therefore I begin to see things now better. Amen. I can see things in the spirit eye than in the natural. So when things in the natural is not right, I can see focus and see more things in the spirit better than the natural because I'm seeing the things in what I'm, uh, what is supposed to be in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit commits his guidance to us. So those are true sons of God. He only gonna, he's not going to force himself on you. He's not going to force himself on you. He gives you the opportunity to make your mind to trust him. Amen. In other words, he's not going to force you to trust him. Amen. He's going to see whether you're going to trust him. Amen. So you're tested right now. Are you going to trust the spirit? Are you going to trust your flesh? Are you going to trust what you see? Amen. Are you going to trust what you believe? Amen. What you, who, you, who, who, who report you believe in? Who are you trusting? Are you believing what he's saying? Are you believing that he's going to take that and turn around? Amen. Hallelujah. Then he say, he rewards. He rewards every time you obedience to him, he's going to reward you. That means that faith that work is no dead no more. It's alive. So he said, he reward them digitally seek him. Because you did the seek him in obedience. You choose to obey his word. You choose to obey him. You're not looking at what it is. You're taking the word and applying it. And not just, stand, not just 
sitting on it, ain't doing nothing about it, but you're applying it and believing it in action. You moving on that word. Amen. You let it activate the things in your life that needs to be activated the way that God wants it. Amen. Remember I said, when you get a perm, you need to activate it to make it, make it a, a perm to work. So when you're taking what you're doing, you allow the Holy Spirit to take that word and activate in your life to make it work for you because the word will work for you. If the word of God is quick and powerful, you allow it to come in into a, a process, into a place where it's supposed to be. You're not looking at what it is. You're making your mind up saying, okay, Holy Spirit, have your way. Okay, Holy Spirit, I understand. And then you begin to speak. You, you, you're getting out the flesh. You, 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 you're seeking more in the Spirit. You're walking more in the Spirit. You're praying more in the Spirit. You're singing more in the Spirit. You're allowing the Holy Spirit to do it more in the Spirit. And so therefore, you're coming out on top as winners. You're no longer losing the situation. You're no longer losing out. Out. You're winning. Amen. Hallelujah. You're becoming winners. You are winners. Amen. Hallelujah. You're winning. Amen. You are winning. You're not losing. You're winning. And you realize that you never lost because Jesus won for you a long time ago. He did everything on the cross for we can win. Let me say this again. He did everything on the cross for you could win. Amen. He did it all for you could be a winner in the church. Say amen. Hallelujah. He did it all for you to win. Amen. And you're winning. And the enemy knows it. So he's going to try his best to make you feel that you're not winning. He's going to try his best to say, you're losing out. But when you allow him, the Holy Spirit, to do it for you, praise God, he's going to let them know you're a true son of God. You, uh, you came true son, how because, how you become sons of God, true sons of God. Because when you became that relationship with God through Jesus Christ and became righteous, the sonship of him came in you to become true sons of God. Amen. To have that strong relationship. You, it, it couldn't be done of your own because of your own, it can be done. So the Holy Spirit is necessary for your interest into the kingdom of God. You need the Holy Spirit. And when you start depending on the Holy Spirit, then you're going to walk over the bar. Amen. And see, people have been leaving him out. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you're going you're gonna to start walking into the place where you... Uh, you're supposed to be walking in. Amen. You're going to begin to see things the way he wants you to see. Amen. You're no longer blinded of what you see. You're seeing the things the way God wants you to see. Hallelujah. You're not letting your focus more on seeing what he says, not focus on what not you see. Amen. So you're walking by faith and not by sight. You believe in what he says. Hallelujah. You're not being distracted what people say. You know, people, there's people being not all in. That's why they're not winning. They're so distracted by stupid stuff. They're so distracted by simple stuff. They're so distracted by complex stuff. Their mind is wondering all the time. They can't be still. You know why they can't be still? They, they, they can't pass the test? Because their mind is, is wondering all the time. They're not still to listen. They, they're impatient. Amen. They're not listening. They, their mind is traveling. And they don't know where they're traveling. They're in another land. They're in a land they've never been before. And so they lose out on focus, and that's why they miss out the resurrection of, of things in their life. Hallelujah. But when you let the Holy Spirit decide your assignment, the problem you were created to solve. Amen. You baby to solve the problem through him. And then you say, my goodness, that problem was not all that complicated all the time. You know why it was complicated? Because I was trying to do it myself instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to do it for me. I was trying to do it myself. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's why I didn't win. Amen. That's why I lost out. So when you allow the Holy Spirit to do it for you, you begin to win the case. Amen. So a lot of you losing the case because of your ignorance, of your uh, your stupidity, of your know-it-all, which you don't know it all. Amen. And so you got a lack of awareness and lack of knowledge. And, 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 and you say the same old ignorant conversation. You ask ignorant questions because you don't have no common sense of how to live. Because why? You're not dependent on the Holy Spirit. And so you miss out what God is saying to you. You miss out the blessing. You miss out the beautiful things that God has for you. Amen. Because why? You are distracted too much. And so when you're distracted, it pulls away the things that God has for you. A lot of you are double-minded. Amen. You don't have to have no dementia or Alzheimer. A lot of you are losing your mind because your mind is distracted with other things. Some of you wake up with the same problem. Some of you wake up, well, if I would have did it that way, this happened. Or uh, what if, what this person, how they looking? And you, you're so busy looking at somebody, what they ain't should be, and you ain't what you are. Amen. So you, you allowing the enemy to distract you to miss out what God has for you. That's the problem why you ain't winning that battle. That's the problem why you keep going in circles. Amen. Instead of going forward, you keep going backwards. Amen. Stop allowing that happen. 
You're distracted by the, the stupid stuff at all. Amen. You allow him to, you allow the enemy to pull your way. You're not listening to God because you're distracted. Well, uh, 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 this here and, and, and that there and, uh, well, what is she is and what is they all this and all the stuff. You're so busy focusing on what somebody ain't and you ain't what you are. Amen. You're too busy focusing on what somebody is not, which you ain't really who you are, some of me. I don't care what job you got. I don't care what business you got. If you ain't got no peace and joy what you're doing, you in the wrong thing. Hallelujah. Amen. If you ain't got no peace and joy, uh, a position of being a pastor, of uh, being a, 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 a evangelist, teacher, apostle, a prophet, a bishop, you in the wrong thing. Because you have positioned yourself in something that the Holy Ghost didn't do. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be the, uh, 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 may be the, uh, the, uh, the, the businessman over something and, and, and you, and you always steady trying to make the business better because you ain't got no peace. You ain't got no joy. You ain't rested in it. But when you let the Holy Spirit, you got to get saved first. When you get saved and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, he will lead you into the path of righteousness and truth. And it'll always be something added on. It'll always be a blessing because you allow him to do it and you are not doing it. Is anybody catching on? Amen. So he wants you to go over and above and rise above. It's time for you to be above. It's time to live the over and above in the land of the milk of honey. That have more than enough that you have so much you're going to have to share it and give it away. Amen. Hallelujah. That you be such a giver. Amen. And you be such a testimony. And someone else, when they have given up, you say, no, I didn't give up. So why should you give up? Amen. So let him have his plan in your life. Let him do it the way he's supposed to do it. And you will see the difference, said the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 So God wants you to live over and above. He wants you to have more than enough. Amen. He had enough of you living at this low. Amen. A lot of you have been living at this low. He wants you to rise above. He wants you to go above. He wants you to live above. And people look at you and say, they be so odd. They say, oh, they got, they, yeah, they want, you, they can't compare you with somebody else who living in, uh, supposed to be living the best, who have a best home, who have the best cars, who have all this. But yet this person does not show the peace Yet this person does not show the joy of God in their life because they do it themselves and God is not in this. But see, you, God is in yours. That's a totally different. You allowing the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because when you pass that multiple choice test, you allow the Holy Spirit to pick the answer for you that you'll pass it. Amen. And because you allow the Holy Spirit to pick the answer for you, you pass the test and they still the same way it was still doing the same thing. Has not, uh, uh, has not experienced the promotion, has not experienced it because they're not waiting upon the Lord. Amen. They have not humbled themselves and allowed the Lord to exhort them. Allow the Lord to promote. He said, promotion don't come to the East and West. Promotion comes to God. They are not allowing the Lord to promote them. They're allowing, they suck the people and everything else to do them. And so they're missing out what God has ordained for them to do. Amen. And so God is saying, even though you're challenged right now, he don't want you to miss out what he has for you. Hallelujah. 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 He wants the, everything to be so hard. And people look, oh my God. I remember where she was. I remember who she was. I remember where he was. I remember who she was. I remember the family. I remember all this. How did they get to this point? They was at a breaking point of nothing. And in one day, they in a higher point they never been before. That's the kind of God we serve. He'll take you from that where you at uh, over and above. In one day, I'm truly a, 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 a believer in miracles. Uh, that God can take a, a do something in a six second. I seen God did a six second miracle. Amen. When people is about six seconds is, is, is no seconds, close to no seconds. If he can do that for something else, for a game, a, a circumstances. Of someone else, how much more would God does which in your circumstances in six seconds? If you believe and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, if you believe and allow the Holy Spirit to direct you in the spirit, not in the natural, you will see these things manifest in your life. You will see the changes. You will see the turnaround. You will see the breakthroughs. Hallelujah. See, it's hard for the devil to mess with a fighter. You see, a lot of people say they're a fighter, but they're not a fighter. 
They they give up too quick. See, a lot of people talk with their mouth, and the minute they go in, in the fighting realms and they get knocked down, a lot of them stay down because they say, "What well, if I get up? I, I have to go through all these changes." So if, the, if if I get knocked down seven times, I'm gonna get back up seven times. I'm not gonna give up. I'm too close to things that everything goes to start coming in because I'm gonna start resting in peace. I'm not going to look like I'm tired. I'm not going to look down and out. I'm going to grow gracefully. Oh, I'm going to, I don't really need no bow test. I won't need none of that because I learned to rest in him. I learned to trust in him. I learned to allow the Holy Spirit to do it for me. And when I learned the Holy Spirit, then everything stopped coming in order in my life. When it used to be, it's not no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give me praise. So God, when you do that, you're going to see God take you over and above than you ever been before. That's what he wants to do, precious ones. Let him take you. Let him reposition you in a place you've never been before. Let him take you to that place. You see, you've been allowing people to take you to that place and they messing you up. Don't let these people do that. Amen. Let the Lord take you into that place that you need to go at. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let him do that for you. Praise God. You, the Bible say, eyes are not seen, or ears are not heard, or even into the hearts of man. But God got prepared for them that love you. God got great plans for you because you have made a change in your life for him. When you allow the Holy Spirit to do it for you, God can help or put you in that place. Take you out that Logabah, a place of nothing. Take you out that dead zone. Take you out that dead end and put you in a place you've never been before. Where there is, there's so much, you have so much that you will have to be, you have to give away. You're going to be, be overflow, over and above. Like never before. And say, my gosh, I never thought that this would happen to me. Amen. And the reason why it happened to you, because you changed your thought patterns. Your thought patterns are not what you think. Your thought patterns are lining up with the word of God. And you have allowed the Holy Spirit, amen, to do it for you. Amen. And you, what are you doing? You're no longer allowing you, our people, to come in between you and the Holy Spirit. You really trust in the Holy Spirit. You're really allowing the Holy Spirit to create it. it your, the ideas are more created. The spirit of creativity is on you more. Because you're allowing the Holy Spirit to bring the creativity of when you're challenged, you have a better understanding. When you're challenged, you know that you know that God is right there for you. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we begin to think that way, then things start falling in place for us. And that's what he wants. He wants things to start in place for you. Amen. That you live over and above. Hallelujah. So your assignment on earth is simply the problem. God created you to solve. Amen. So every time you have a problem, he's going to show you how to solve it through the Spirit of God. When you allow the Holy Spirit to do it for you. Let me say this again. Every time you have a problem, he's going to show you how to solve it through the Holy Spirit. And he's going to show you how to way to get out of it. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And you say, Apostle, you've been talking to me. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal the future things for me. Even before they even happen. I'm allowed the Holy Spirit to reveal the future events in my life. Even before it happened. I'm allowed the Holy Spirit to direct me. I'm allowed the Holy Spirit to lead me. I'm allowed the Holy Spirit to have his way in my life. Because I know I can't go wrong. Amen. The Holy Spirit can eliminate all fear of man in your life. All fear of man. If you let him do it. You will no longer be uh, walking in fear. That's what the enemy wants you to do. Walk in fear. To give up. You may walk in faith and trusting in God, no matter what. Amen. Hallelujah. You will walk in the promises of peace, a peace that passes all understanding. The Holy Spirit is the only source of your peace that will bring in joy and happiness. Because when you, when God bless you, there will be peace and there will be joy. There will not be no confusion or no illusion. There will be peace that passes all understanding. So you allow him to do it. You're going to see the change, said the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Father. So we, we took it for uh, Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do a seating and above, more than you think or ask for, according to the power that works in us, and that power is the Holy Ghost. You have allowed the Holy Ghost to do it for you. And you're going to see the manifestation of the breakthroughs of miracles in your life like never before in the church. Amen. 
Amen, everybody. Hallelujah. Oh, we close to the uh the conference. Hallelujah. The conference is November 11 and 12. Amen. We got one more week. Amen. The conference is coming close. And the church, amen. And I'm right, Ma. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saturday and Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. The, uh, the registration is $50. You can register when you get there. Amen. Hallelujah. Come all and be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, God is going to bless you. Amen. Like never before. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about restoration and restoration and recovery. And it's going to deal with all categories of your life. From marriage, family, children, from the beginning of time to the end of time. Amen. That God is rest, restoring and recovering what he, he has planned to do for our life and what he planned to do for the world. Amen. For the people. Amen. So you're going to be blessed. The Holy Ghost is going to lead. Amen. Hallelujah. Yours truly host and uh, uh, speaker is Apostle Lord, which is me. And I speak to them by the Holy Spirit. I know you're going to have a good time. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is going to be there. So so get on board. Amen. And come out and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. All information on my website. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go on the website. All information there. Amen. And to find out what's going on. Amen. You can go on Facebook. Amen. Hallelujah. The time is uh, 11 o'clock a.m. on the ninth floor in the Panther Room at the Stadium Hotel. Amen. Of information on my website. You can call up my name, Apostle Lord J. Poshman, or just Lord Poshman. Go on Facebook and go on my profile. Go on Twitter. Go on YouTube, Periscope. And just go to the website. You'll see all information to register. Amen. And don't forget the register is $50. Amen. $50 for 18 years and older. And those are under 18, 17 is free. Amen. You don't want to miss it. Amen. November 11 and 12. Amen. At 11 o'clock a.m. on the ninth floor at the State Hotel. Amen. The registration for it at the hotel, I think it's over. They're getting discounts, so you can call anyway at the same hotel in Mammy Gardens, Florida. Amen. Uh, you can get another hotel and uh, get a discount. Amen. Uh, and we'll come all and bring others, and you'll be blessed. There's so much going on. You can take a vacation. We got cruises always because we live in Fort Lauderdale. We got South Beach. We got big malls. We got a whole lot of things going on. You don't want to miss it. Amen. Praise God. So go on and find out what's going on. Amen. And don't forget, I'm 66 years old. My birthday has been gone, and uh, you got to November 11 and 12 to plant that seed. And after 12, I'm not going to ask no more. And we're asking people to plant a hundred dollar seed. Amen. And thank you for all those who plant. I haven't forgot you're gonna get something back for doing that. Amen. We show our appreciation. Amen. So plant that hundred dollar seed. You can step out, look for a lot of you got money and you've been cheap with your money holding back. Amen. But you want God to bless you. Amen. You want me to speak to you, but you go take it someone else, and then when you need prayer, you get on there. So if this ministry can be a blessing, plant that seed of a hundred dollars. We appreciate it. Amen. And uh, God God will bless you. And if you don't want to plant that's up to you. I still won't get mad. I still pray for you. So plant that seed hundred dollars in the ministry has been a blessing to you of the teaching and the preaching of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Don't forget to get my book. It's at uh, authors.com. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can, uh, authors.com. You don't want to uh, forget to get that. Amen. It's at authors.com. Amen. And uh, you can get it at Bons and Nova, uh, uh, Amazon.com. A change must come. But uh, uh, Apostle Lord Shea Poshman and I'm working on my other books. I got to get those out soon too. Amen. So you can get the book. So be a blessing to us. Don't forget to pay your tithes at your local church and your organization you're in. And if you're on this organization, pay your tithes. Amen. And if you're looking for an organization, you're welcome to join us and let me know. All information on my website, the call. Amen. To uh, get in touch. Amen. To be part of this uh, anointing organization by God. Amen. And I give God the glory. And thank you for your support. Thank you for being on here. And I pray for those who are not saved that you receive Jesus Christ and Lord and Savior. Say, Lord God, I ask you to come in my life. I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me my sin. Cleanse it with your blood and make me whole. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And then ask the Holy Ghost to come in. I want to fill in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of tongue. Amen. And he's going to come in and fill you up. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You're walking in the power. If you believe all that, you're walking in the power. And welcome to the royal family. And if you have backslide, repent and get your salvation restored again. Grace will, will keep you. And I just want to thank everybody. We're going to put this on pause until we meet again on Friday. Amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Got to go. My battery is about to go out on my phone. Amen. Because Periscope eats up a lot of the batteries. So have a blessed day. Throw some loving kisses. Mwah.
Be blessed in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. Love you, Facebook. Love you, Periscope. Bye-bye. God bless you. Oh, wait a minute. Let me pray for you. No evil shall befall you. No plague shall come to your dwelling. For the Lord will have the angel in charge over thee, lest you dash your foot against a stone. I'm praying the cover and protection over you and your family. I'm praying for your debt cancellation. I'm praying for protection, security over everything that's yours. Amen. And ask God to be with all of you and have a blessed, prosperous day. And the favor of God be upon you as well. In Jesus' name, love you. Be encouraged and be blessed in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. All righty. Bye-bye, Facebook.